Hey everybody, it's Unlike Dragoon 91 here from Canopy Gaming, and we're doing our Dungeons and Dragons again here. Uh, we're going to go out around the room here. I am your DM. Uh, we have at the top of our list here Astrid Windsong, who plays Astrid, who is Violet Gem. Hello. We have Miss Connie, uh, Grime Cracker, which is Calypso in game. What? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> we have Papa Graham Cracker Gamer, who plays Herbert the Pervert. Oh, my Papa. Did I become another daddy? You, yeah. Yeah. Are you my... I don't know if you know this, but you are actually a daddy already. That's not new. Are you my uh, children? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused. I'm, well, I'm if, if anything, you're the, you're the leader of the shenanigans. Well, and we have JD, who plays Mr. Minnow. <laughs> The horniest of characters. Hello. Mm. The horniest. Yes. The horniest of all of the characters. <laughs> he has a top hat. So, top yes, hat. where we last left off all of our characters here, uh, they were able to go ahead and make their way uh, through um, from Cragmaw Castle. Uh, they were able to go ahead and navigate uh, mostly successfully uh, through the... Uh, desolate, uh, burnt lands uh, into thick, thick forest into what may have allegedly been some type of fey forest. And they came out and they met some uh, some young adults uh, to between, you know, they're in, in their 20s, roughly, uh, as soon as they got into town. And uh, uh, Herbert decided to uh, do thaumaturgy. And uh, there was a guard force that came out to, to greet them. Uh, that thought that they were doing something nefarious. And in doing so, uh, one of the uh, children, um, we're just going to go with Merv uh, over here, um, went ahead and, and uh, recognized Minnow, and uh, everyone dropped their weapons. Because we're going to make a, a voyeuristic show. Brush your teeth. Um, so Merv, uh, to, Merv and all the... Merv and all the children uh, go ahead and they, they kind of uh, lower their weapons from, you know, scabbards to um, uh, to like 12-foot uh, pikes and stuff like that, all in, uh, in leather armor. Uh, Merv basically saying, you know, M M Master Minnow, is, is that you? It is me. Oh my, you haven't aged today. You, you look stunning. You're, you're just like we, just like we remembered you. Where, where have you guys been all this time? Saving the world, of course. Oh, well, did, 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 kind of seems trivial now at this point, but did you guys ever find the fairies? Did... You could say that, yeah, we, yeah, um, we found them. Yeah, they're, um, that. That portal doesn't work anymore. That I'm sure you guys knew that. Yeah, after about a week or so, we tried to come come find you guys there, and we even we even brought uh, uh, what's his name here? Uh, we even brought you know Darren Miles. over. We even brought Darren over to to see if you know, we could you know put some type of search party together, but we weren't able to go through and and get through. We just Everything was overgrown, and, and we weren't able to get through after you guys went through. What happened yeah. to the balls? Um, and what? then... Balls? What balls? Ah, uh, we'll talk about it later. You clearly um, have not seen them. Uh, we also <laughs> have been doing firefighting. Um, so, you know, that big, big forest fire, we took care of it. So... I... Uh, we didn't know that there was a forest fire. Yeah, kind of. Oh, well, that was probably about 20 years ago now. Yeah. 15 years ago? Ish. Yeah. That seems a long time. Yeah. That seems like a lot longer. It, it, it took you 10... You guys have only been gone for 10 years. It. You, you guys took 10 it, years to fight a fire? It was a big a fire. fire. And it was a really big fire. And then we also had to, like, try to save people, and then there was, like, things got out of hand. Um, we peed on we some elementals. Got, we kind of got lost a couple times. Uh, we had to take the long way home after yeah, the fairy yeah. ring closed. Yeah, oh. and it was just... 
It was it was not fun. We're glad to see. S I I can only speak for myself. I'm glad to see some familiar faces. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are home. We've 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 done a lot of work since you guys have been gone, and we basically kept on doing what what Minnow taught us uh, with the the lessons that he taught us in the limited time that we had, and we kept on working on the the uh, Thunder Tree Force you know, guild, and we. We've been helping to build around the town and, and you know getting rid of you know people that don't belong here and, and and everything like that. Yeah. When you say getting rid of people who don't belong here, how do you get rid of them? Uh, usually we, we give them a chance to, to be you know, upright citizens. Uh, outside of that, if they, they commit any crimes, then we then we we deal out justice as as needed. And does it include lobbing off heads? Uh, we haven't had to lob off heads. It was is more of like a stabbing stabbing motion, until okay. they all the red stuff comes right. out and they they drop it to the ground <laughs> dead usually. No, um, no, I got something that'll work way better. We've we've cut off hands before though for for people that steal. No, have you ever done castration? Um, on, only when I help my papa out in the papa out in the field to with like the new new calves and stuff like that. This is how we will get rid of people from now on. Oh, how okay? I mean, we, we 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 normally run that by uh by Darren since he's the the mayor and stuff like that and, yeah, and some don't of the townspeople. When don't worry about oh. him. Just just do this from now on. We'll talk to Darren. Um, will one of you please walk with me to the? Graham, I'm gonna first need a persuasion on this group of children. If you would please. <laughs> okay, children. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you, you guys, but you know, when you guys were here, you guys, you know, were kind of the bosses of the. Oh, that's, mm, that's not very convincing. That's, that's uh, neat. <laughs> uh, they says, I, mm, we'll have to talk to Darren about that. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's that's right. I mean, you guys well, have I'll, been, you guys I'll talk been long. To Darren. I'll talk to Darren, and, and I'll show him my cod piece, and we'll all, we'll, you know, he'll be enthralled by it. All right. You well, you do you. Do you guys have any records of what has happened since we've been gone? Like a turntable? Well, uh, not, not really a turntable. <laughs> I, like a I don't, I, I don't know what a turntable is, but uh, we could. I don't know. Um, it's well, exactly what it sounds like. It's a we'll, table that turns. And then you get on it, and we spin it, and then you do things on top of it. Uh, so like spin the ball, but with a human. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Right. Nothing could go wrong <laughs> there. Soup. <laughs> uh, the children uh, then go ahead and you know, take turns going, well, not children, young adults, uh, uh, go into uh, some detail as to the ongoings of the town ever since you guys have been uh, been gone here. Um, PayPal is now uh, one of the established um, you know, pay forms of payment throughout, the, uh, throughout this, this part of the world, uh, and it's still, uh, still growing. Uh, there's been some, uh, some modifications to its uh, practices and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to the way that the birds were treated, uh, originally there were some some problems with the, the way that the birds were being treated. Uh, they're now treated much much better now. Uh, you know when it comes to delivery and uh, and uh, sending them back to their original sources. Um, you can see that the the children and have uh, been kind of helping out also as um, uh, kind of hired. Uh, work work people essentially to go ahead and you know build on parts of the town, uh, build up uh, you know the, some of the buildings, give them uh, expansions, second, sometimes even third floors uh, to some of these um, some of these places here. The businesses are booming. Um, you guys can see you know some of the townspeople that are starting to come around from uh, from around the corner that uh, that were all kind of scared away with that thaumaturgy blast there. Um, um, they go into a little bit more detail that there's been a few more shops that have uh, have opened in town um and there's been a, a lot of uh a lot of changes when it comes to additions building up uh, businesses as uh, new establishments here um and then they give you a little bit of a tour oh i'm going to raise my hand and ask if they have anybody okay. that they uh they have i have a question oh yes Yes, Herbert. What do you do? You currently have anybody you're trying to get rid of? Uh no, actually, we we do a pretty good job of going around around the town, keeping things safe. We even have like a, a couple of us go on on watch every night just to make sure that there's, you know, no riffraff coming in or out. 
Can I put up a suggestion box? Uh, yeah, we actually already have one. It's, it's right over here. It's right next to the Shrine of Luck. Can I look inside the suggestion box? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now I want to take a look inside the suggestion box. See if there's any suggestions. See if okay. I can uh, take a look at some of these ideas. Uh, yeah. You go over to the suggestion box and open up um, the box and see if there's a slip of paper in there. I want to read this piece. Oh, my God. I just rolled one. Um, you <laughs> uh, you look in there and um, and see the slip of paper that says uh, uh, more hand jobs at the balls. Oh, I like this idea. Okay. Well, I'm going to give this to Minnow and uh, ask for his input on this if he thinks this is a decent idea. I think jobs, more jobs around the town is always going to be a good idea. It makes the place much more profitable. Good. Let's give it to Darren. <laughs> uh, we'll make it his priority. And uh, he's probably, we've missed how many years now? It's uh, been what? Approximately ten. 10 years have passed. 10 years. So Darren is probably in his 40s or 50s. Yeah, he's getting up there. He was uh, he was a retired uh, you know, military guy from... Uh, uh, from Neverwinter, when you guys met him originally, so he's oh. he's getting high up there in age. He's uh, okay, he's, so he's in his he golden might, years. He might not be able to. I Darren might be the kind of guy that likes to watch. So let's let's. I want to give him this. Uh, I I yeah, I got this. I wonder if, I wonder if he still has all his teeth. Because <clears throat> well, if he doesn't, you know, that... it might make it more. Well, you know. To, Depending on if he's the pitcher or receiver, I okay. mean, he might, yeah. Just then, just then, an, uh, an elderly man comes up uh, holding a, a cane. Here he says, "All right, Sheldon, you guys, uh, you guys are a lot quicker than I remember. What's going to? Oh my God! It the the you guys are back. The original Thunder Force, the the OG Thunders. It, Darren." Oh. He pushes through the the crowd of children up to you and and comes in and and, uh, and gives uh, Herbert a big old hug. Uh, Herbert, you don't remember him being this strong, but he's he's kept himself in shape for an old guy for uh, for as long as you guys have been gone. Is this Darren? Yeah, it's 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 it's. I gotta do an old man voice. Uh, it's, it's it's me, yeah, Herbert. You still got that Richard dungeon Manishin. underneath your uh, office? Long time I'm no here. See. I'm here. I'm sorry. What was that, Herbert? Do you still have your dungeon under your office? I just out of game here, real quick. Was that a thing? Yeah, you that asked. was the yeah. old mayor. That wasn't Darren. Oh, that it was wasn't old? Darren. Oh, what happened to the old? What happened to the old mayor? Oh, oh. Well, we we ended up kicking him out out of town here. We we got tired of his shenanigans. He never really you know grew with the backbone, and well, we we just told him to get the fuck out. So, so who's Darren? Oh, Darren, that's me. I'm Darren. I'm Darren Edermith. <laughs> Darren, He's bend great. over real quick. I want to see I'm, if I remember anything about you. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. Um, From the apple the, orchard? The, the town got together and, and voted me in since, because of my, my background. So. Oh, is his wife the barmaid that I tried to come on to? No. Yes, I think so. It's, it's been it's a long been... ten years for you it Herbert. has been a long time. <laughs> well, I have a suggestion here for you, Darren. Oh, yes, it's yes. On, it's on this piece of paper. Would you like me to read it to you, or do you want to read it? And by the way, do you still have all your teeth? Oh, yeah, for the most part, yeah. There's, I got, so I got uh, some wisdom teeth removed a couple of years back, but... Uh, you you want to... I could, I could remove some of your teeth for you if you want. Oh no, we got the we got the dentist in town for that. He's he does all kinds of things. He does uh, uh, salves and, and he charges you for that. I'll do it for free. That's he, wow. he, he does charge, but he's, he's he he charges a good price for his for his services. Yeah. Well, all you got to do in return for me pulling out your teeth is you got to go over to Minnow's horns and you got to shine them up because they've gotten dirty. Um, no. Okay, well, the offer stands. <laughs> Here, oh, here's the suggestion. Mr. Peter might like to keep his teeth. Oh yes, we have another another thing in the suggestion box. Oh, okay. Yeah, go, go ahead and read this suggestion, Darren. I think you'll oh. like it. More more hand jobs at the balls. 
Well, we we're working on this. This is this is a work in progress. There's, we've gotten lots of suggestions here, but it's it's kind of been uh, it's it's been difficult with the uh, with the the new management there. But it's uh, it's we're working through it. We're discussing things, and uh, and Barry's putting together a lot of uh, uh, a lot of new new things that'll that'll help us out here. We we won't have any Just... more accidents no more. Does your new management, uh, is he open to critiquing and feedback on how he's doing things? Because if well, he is, he might be willing to trade information for something else. Well, technically, you guys are the owners. I mean, that before you guys left, that was still yours. We just, the, the inhabitants there were, were just kind of keeping things up, and we, they've been putting oh. some stuff together, so... So is that the name of the store, or is that the the what we offer there? Our hideout. Oh, we we don't call it Tresendor Manor anymore. It's that's that's an old name. That's it's, it's ten years old, damn near. Um, so we, it, it, underneath the, the new management, I guess. Well, I guess co-managers now. Now that you, now that you guys are back, um, they renamed the place a couple of times here until one of the one of the names stuck. You know, just to go ahead and keep the things in check. It's now our it's now our new uh, brothel and uh, kind of a sex dungeon here. Now that we're a little bit more of a bustling town. Oh, okay. So why is this in the suggestion box then? Oh, there's been some couple accidents here. We got we got uh, one of the that we don't we don't believe in you know the you know temptations of the, of the flesh here. Everything was was uh, changed over and kind of uh, you know new age now. Everything is uh, mechanicized and uh, um, we had we had problems with uh, with with hand jobs before because the oh, the okay. some of the mechanical I people I guess you could call them were uh, were ripping things off so well, we we kind of had I, to stop doing that so can i have uh does anybody have any paper darren you got some I, paper? i do i have some paper in my book i open my book and rip out the back page and, and you got a, you got a pencil <laughs> you got a pencil or anything to yep. okay i'll take that and i'm going to doodle something on the paper while i leave darren alone i'm going to kind of move my way to the back of the group and just doodle on the paper Okay. Does anybody want to talk to Darren? <laughs> um, um, Darren's gonna go ahead I... and catch uh, catch the eye of uh, the individual that's with <laughs> you there. He's gonna reach over and uh, ex- extend his hand out um, over to uh, Gallus. It's been a long time, my friend. Been a long time. Yes, you you look look pretty young yet still. Uh, Gallus is gonna respond back. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, very good to see you, Darren. How is how is your retirement treating you? Is, uh, they go back and forth, uh, basically saying, "Oh, I'm the town mayor. I've kind of come Polity out of retirement a little bunch. bit here and there." Dropped in um, on my outside five of that, break to say hi. Oh, so hey, Chloe. Hi, guys. Uh, outside of that, uh, uh, Darren says, oh, "Why don't you come on by? We got a new uh, new expansion here. Hopefully, to the uh, to the order. We could uh, we should uh, we should meet up later. Bring uh, bring your uh, your friends as well when you when you have a moment." Hmm. Yeah. The, the ones that, that belong, anyway. Yeah. Yay, that's us. Yeah. Yay, we belong. Yeah. Um, I look at Darren and ask, is Charles Jr. still around? Um, you, you asked Darren this? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, uh, Darren's going to respond back to you. He says, oh, yes, he's a... Uh, uh, Darren, he's uh, he's he's still at, he's over at the at balls still. He's uh, he helps out with uh, with with everything here. He's he's come a long way since uh, since you guys last met him. Um, and then I take out the two glass containers with the children's ashes mm-hmm. and say, these children came with us and they didn't make it back, and we wanted to bring the remains back to oh. the families. Oh, oh no. You brought, oh my gosh, was that, uh, children, help me out with this here real quick. What were, th- it was, the children, uh, well, children, I'm just going to call them the children, even though we know that they're young adults. Um, they're going to respond back and go, oh, Darla and Alfalfa, no. Oh, we knew that they went with you, but we never, we, we didn't know what happened. They didn't, they didn't come back with you? What happened? They were lost in the fire. Oh no! I hope they helped you guys out a lot. That's really sad. They Those did. they were our favorite. Mm. Yeah, they were. They fought bravely. They were heroes. Oh yeah. my goodness! Uh, we'll we'll make sure that these get back to their to their their well, their moms and 
dad's kind of kicked the bucket, but we we could keep him in the in the Thunder Force Guild, you know, right above the mantle. I think that would I think that would be a great idea. Uh, they go ahead and take the the two vials from you. Um, they ask, is 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 this all of their ashes? It kind of seems kind of small. I mean, for for normal those ashes. Were, those were the only. Uh, they died young. That's how much we could. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> only the good die young. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gals, <laughs> right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Gals is going to go ahead and chime in. He says, oh, well, this has uh, been great and fine, but I have some uh, some catching up to do, uh, some letters to write, and uh, apparently a PayPal uh, account to set up. So I will uh, I will join you later. <laughs> um, feel free. I will uh, probably be at the uh, uh, at the local uh, local pub or tavern. Uh, Darren, which one do you do you recommend? It's uh, I understand that there should be two uh, two bars in town yet still two two taverns. Oh uh, yeah, so you got uh, you got the the sleeping giant down the down the road. Uh, you can get uh, like a room or two uh, down at Balls. Uh, otherwise, I I recommend the Stone Hill, and they're they're pretty good. They're pretty good under new management there too. So ah yes, I will. Uh, to the I, old I will I will visit the uh, the, the the Stone Hill when I'm uh, I'll I'll be there when uh, when I finish. And the uh, Gallus uh, uh, bows uh, to um, uh, Astrid and Calypso. Um, also yeah. bows to Minnow and gives a finger to uh, Herbert as he walks away. Bye, uh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> as, as he's walking away uh, with his uh, finger extended, uh, he says, The name is Gallus, Ashat. <laughs> and while That's he's walking away, I quickly go over to the suggestion box and dump my paper <laughs> in there that I just doodled on and come back to the group. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I did it in a sneaky way. Are you trying I to make it so and... nobody is watching, or? Yep. I turned around. I turn okay. around and say, "Hey, can I have my pencil back?" Yeah, here's your pencil. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Do, do you want me to roll sneaking to see if anybody saw me? If yeah, if if you're trying to do it so that nobody sees you, absolutely. That's an eleven. Okay. Oh, because you have a negative one to it? Okay. Yeah. I would say that uh, who's got a, pa- a passive perception? Uh, 11 or higher? <laughs> um, <laughs> I do. I have 12. Kay. Connie yeah. saw it. Astrid saw it. <laughs> Minnow, how about Aww. you, honey? What's your passive? Oh, yeah. 12. Yep. Minnow saw it. <laughs> uh, I would say... Here, we'll do... And all of the children saw it. Uh, let's <laughs> do, 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 D- Darren saw it too. All right. So yeah, the uh, the the Merv uh, goes in, uh, steps up to the group. Is there anything else we could we could help you guys with? And you'll get re- reacquainted, or things we could tell you about the town, or what do you feel is most important for us to know at this point in time? Oh, uh, well, uh. We oh all kinds By of things. By the way, good, good job, guys. Like, oh, honestly, good job. I well, think you will have some additional uh, words added to your title for stepping up and doing what you have been done, and we'll discuss it as a group and let you guys know what those titles will be. Good. Cool. In the meantime, in the meantime, you should check out that suggestion box. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I, I lean over uh, to Herbert. By the way, you were not subtle at all. It wasn't um, me. I told you it was in the shadows. The the children all kind of, mm. kind of, you know, <sighs> sheepishly. Uh, yeah, we, we saw. I mean, we like we all kind of saw. It's he he was trying to be sneaky. We saw him doing that like that spy thing, but we we all saw. We'd, I'll look at it yeah. here a little bit. Can I persuade them to go do it now and to also humor me into making me think that they didn't see me? How nefarious is this? <laughs> so Merv goes over to the, the suggestion box and uh, and pulls out the uh, the piece of paper and uh, starts reading it. Graham, what's on this piece of paper? Uh, I want to draw it. Can I draw it? <laughs> oh, no. Where can I draw it? 
<laughs> uh, let's go ahead and draw it over on at, at your table, wherever the on the the edge of the of the table. All right. Dragoon, I'm sending you something. Mm. Is it against terms of service? What was no. what was written or? Okay. No, it's uh, basically they took a video or a snapshot. Literally, you look like you're beating up children. And then there is a photo of you looking disappointed. Who did this? <laughs> sure. <laughs> the one who did the cowboy last time. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> so they put some clips together or is this a video uh, no it was just a image and it said it looks like you're literally be beating up those children of our group in front of the kids and then he sent that oh and he goodness. just looked really disappointed in us <laughs> is that someone being funny or someone being cool <laughs> Oh my goodness, my mustache looks really thick. Yes. And I look really disappointed. Like Yeah, exactly. Like Yosemite Sam looking disappointed. Uh huh. Oh my goodness. Yep, I like Thanks, it. Make sure. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh so the uh, the rest of the children uh start to go ahead and uh disperse uh back over to uh, the Thunder Force uh, Guild, <laughs> uh, and uh, and Merv is uh, set to arrive oh, over at the. Yeah. Oh, sure sign. Thank you. Oh, Violet, goodness. Thank Violet. Yay. Thank Violet, thank you for giving a tier one sub to to sure sign. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Uh, Merv goes over and uh, opens up the the letter and. Oh God, Graham! That's definitely terms of service. Oh, that. <laughs> what did you do? Graham, are you also streaming at the same time? Is this is his his hands? <laughs> He's just holding on to. Him. That doesn't look. That didn't look like hands when I saw it from orbit. At... He's trying to pull no, his hands up. I didn't think that was hands. He's trying to hold his hands up because then there's. The Santa Claus here with his reindeer. And... So, you're, uh... <laughs> that, 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 that looks even less like hands now. Yeah, that that's... Looks like it's, it's mid-coitus. Yep. That, uh... Uh -huh. So, now that I'm on a watch list, um, <laughs> Graham, what are we looking at from a theater of the mind perspective? This is a... Also, uh, what is it suggesting, considering you put it into a suggestion box? This, this, is, this is suggesting that there are tree people, and they are going to try to take branch over. Branch people. Yeah. They're going to branch, they're gonna br branch out and take over <laughs> the town, and then this is, this is the tree limbs going into the person... And they, they, uh, they're, they're not happy about it. <laughs> then he will become a tree person. And then this is Santa delivering presents with his reindeer going, ho, ho, ho. And he is caught off guard. And then the tree person tries to get Santa. But we don't know if that, if he's successful or not. And then some people are back here, and there are more tree people, but then there's another person over here, and then what happens is this person comes along, and this is their arm, just so we're all on the same page. This is their other arm, which is very oblong, and then this is a warhammer, and... There we go. And then, so, this is me coming to save the town and defeat the tree people. And then, what we do is we then come in and fix the mushrooms that grow inside oh my God, I'm... the tree people. 
<laughs> I, I imagine Merv is over there trying to make sense of this, and Graham, you're like over his shoulder with like the pen or pencil, is continuing like to draw like over his shoulder <laughs> and, ex- I'm, I'm... and explain this extended narrative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes total sense. Oh, damn. It's it's a suggestion that they need to be more mindful of their surroundings, and we're here to protect them. So they need to pay us some more money. Otherwise, Santa might not be able to get them presents next year. You do realize that they're young adults now? Uh, Merv kind of giggles at it a little bit. (laughs) Uh, but then uh, blushes at the same time and hands the suggestion back to you. All right. And uh, do, you, do you guys have mushrooms? Kind of walks away. Uh, yeah, we we definitely got mushrooms. I mean, they're generally not in town. I mean, other than like you find some of them like in the spring or in the late fall, but you can usually get pretty lucky with finding you know any type of mushroom that you're you're after out in the a little bit further out in the, from from town there. Okay. Uh, you, you just got to be careful which ones you eat and which ones you pick, because some of them are poisonous and some of them are, you know, you can still eat. Some some of them make you see, like, you know, weird colors and, and makes you, you know, taste weird sounds and stuff like that. That's what she said. Yeah, <laughs> she Sometimes. It, de- it depends if you're a girl or if you're a boy and you and you pick them up. But, uh, can, you, can you be both? Uh, I don't know anything about that. Um, I have a book. I have a collection. Of books that that I'll share with you sometime. I will educate you, and we will explore the scenarios of mushrooms and boys and girls and Santa Claus. I look forward to that. Actually, I, I'm, as strange as you are, Herbert, we we always look forward to having you guys here, and uh, we'll have, we'll have to get together to talk about that here soon. I'm gonna go back over to Minnow, nudge him, and go. <laughs> that was great, wasn't it? I think it's an absolute work of art. Yeah. yeah I mean, see. surrealist impressionism maybe, but it's still a work of art. Once upon a time, somebody offered me a lot of money for my artwork. I turned it down because I, I, I'm not an artist. I'm, I'm an adventurer. <laughs> I'm ready to move on now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the rest of the party probably agrees with you. <laughs> uh, Violet, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate Happy that. Happy to do it. Um, goodness gracious. Um, uh, so yes, what uh, what do you guys want to do? I want to hmm. go see Charles Jr. Okay. Uh. By the way, the I know I po- I'll have to repost it here in the in the D and D Discord. Uh, but you guys have a list of um, quests that you can continue to do if you would like. Uh, if you guys want to adventure more out, you guys are more than welcome to. If you guys want to visit NPCs and talk and you know maybe get uh, get you know resupplied and this that and the other. How can the quests um, still be valid if we time traveled ten years? They don't necessarily go away. Oh, and there the, isn't a and time the, restriction. And the children never got the quest, so. Yeah, so who I wants to do who waiting. wants to do what? I'm gonna go see Charles Jr. at uh, the brothel. Okay. I wanna look Something at the quest. I never I never thought I would say. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna ask Minnow what he wants to do. Minnow, um, what would you what would you like to do, sir? Brothel sounds good. I mean, <laughs> not sure what that is. I mean, broth means soup, doesn't it? So I'd like to go and get some soup. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, soup. Calypso, soup what, what would you like to do? I'm going to do shots at the Stone Hill then. You're going to do do shots at the Stone Hill? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go right. with Calypso. And while I go with her, I'm going to be looking at the list of quests that I know or found somewhere okay i think i'm uh, i'm under the brothel okie dokie i'm gonna put your characters in there 
Uh, Violet, as you go uh, walk your make your way through through town here, uh, you're seeing all of the different uh, shops and and the looks like the the Sleeping Giant Inn had uh, had some refurbishments done. Uh, you notice an extra uh, shop in town that uh, that wasn't there before, uh, which was uh, it has a big old sign out front with a big uh, orange cat uh, with a big Cheshire oh. brand on it that oh. uh, that reads Garfield's Great Deal Shop. Uh, okay, I'm going there later. By. But first, Charles Jr. Okay. All right. Uh, as you make your way up uh, up to what used to be um, Tresendor Manor, you see this big sign out front here that looks like it's almost like neon, uh, flashing with those like bulbs out the uh, around the the outer rim, uh, and it's um and it just says balls with an exclamation point on it, uh, with a small uh, smaller sign also lit up that says brothel and sex dungeon emporium. Um, See, let me go ahead and save this. Bear with me. Are you, are you having so, fun? I'm trying to get it to stand up, but <laughs> the, steps, the steps keep getting in the way. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it's fine. It's an accessible ramp. It's it's totally good. That is the right height over Lots width. So <laughs> the right angle that it needs to be for wheelchair access. So good job. Yeah. Okay. Here the slats turn. Do they become a slope? Future, all right. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay. Let me find our underground bit. Graham likes underground bits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait. Do you have chips for everybody? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Good. A second here. I don't see. Give me two more seconds here. Give me a second. We haven't been there back since session, session. two. Uh, twelve. I mean. Yeah, yeah. We we haven't been that back there since session twelve. So let me reload that here. Granted, I have done absolutely no editing to this map here, so we'll give you some uh, some descriptions here. Uh, Violet and Minnow, as you uh, get up to um, Balls, uh, you see that the not only has the uh, original uh, Tresendor Manor been restored to its former glory um, that runs the... Uh, the brothel upstairs, uh, but as you go through that familiar kitchen door down the Grangio steps here in uh, uh, section number one here, uh, you're greeted um, by um, a small, small little goblin that uh, has uh, is all kind of like in this uh, red velvet uh, crushed um, um, like smokers. Uh, cigar or smoker's jacket and uh he comes over oh oh my god you guys are uh let's see here what does Trevor sound like here again like oh yes it's uh, welcome back guys it's it's been a really long time it's oh my god you guys <laughs> i got so much stuff to show you we've been so busy oh gosh business is booming it's so it's, it's a it's really cool here let me let me get the, here 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 he uh, uh brings out an extra spare key uh from his pocket that uh uh, it's it's very very old, and uh, at this point here, it hasn't hasn't been used in over ten years. At this point, uh, let me let me show you around. This is really cool. You guys could be impressed by this. Oh man, I've been waiting for this. Bring on this. Yeah, uh, pulls this uh, uh, tasseled uh, rope uh, from the ceiling, uh, and you hear this bing bong uh, as uh, <laughs> oh god oh my god. <laughs> As people are ejected from a cannon uh, across it. <laughs> the... <laughs> hey, that's their king, leave them alone. Right? Yeah. Right, some people are in that kind of thing now. Um, but he guides you through here. Uh, all the uh, all the walls are, are very clean and pristine here. Uh, there is the... <laughs> You've um, There is a... 
uh, the fountain has been redone. It's actually more uh, more modern uh, for you guys there. Uh, as you guys work around here, section number two here is going to be like a receptionist uh, type of uh, type of office uh, that gets uh, gets people sorted. It basically says you know sign in here. Um, the rest of the dungeon is uh, split up into two halves. Uh, the right hand side being that you know four, uh, six, and five, as well as three uh, and seven are going to be all converted into uh, the craziest sex dungeon that you've ever seen here with different types of uh, uh, a split between you know taking different classes on either you know shibari uh, or different instruments uh, like teaching classes uh, and then like straight out uh, you know sex dungeon so just imagine the most elaborate you know sex dungeon uh, type of place that you've ever even conceived of think of it as like a play party uh, but all the equipment is uh, is permanently in the uh, in the rooms here. Um, Very clean. Well, when you when you say the craziest I could ever, ever imagine, um, yeah, you might want to put limits on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, okay, Minol. Now I'm now I'm curious. What 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 do you have up your sleeve here, sir? <laughs> now oh, now no, now, now for, I know you've seen another... some shit. <laughs> oh no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Poor Minol. Um. No, I'm afraid that that's for uh, that's for only fans. Oh, gotcha. You're gonna have to pay, have to pay our, for access to that. Our is our group. Do we have like a dirty, dirty D and D podcast? We where it just oh, <laughs> or everything has an explicit tag on it. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's like Dungeons and Daddies, not Spawn. Yeah. Right. Not a BDSM Sometimes. podcast. Yep. Yet. Um. <sighs> Anywho, as you guys work through the different rooms here in uh, sections four and six, um, you can definitely hear uh, the spanking uh, noises and uh, people shouting um, or other pleasantries uh, coming out of their, their vocal cords as you, uh, as you make your way around here. Um, section uh, 12 and 11 have been converted fully into a, a laboratory uh, slash... Uh, um, just kind of a hodgepodge of all these different types of mechanical gears and levers and all these types of different uh, like uh, uh, steampunk uh, type of uh, type of areas um, that uh, is uh, is occupied uh, by a uh, small um, uh, a small gnome as uh, um, uh, Pardon me here. A uh, small gnome that you guys see here with a little uh, pointy hat, uh, as well as uh, Charles Jr. Um, that uh, uh, comes in. You see uh, Charles uh, Jr. getting uh, fitted with this uh, this uh, almost like a band uh, that uh, this gnome is putting around his head here. It has all types of you know cogs and, and different stuff on his um, you know built into it that are all kind of whirring and wheeling. Um, think of it as like the the kind of inner workings of a, of one of those old fashioned wind up clocks, essentially. Um, okay. As the as you guys uh, uh, you two walk into uh, into the room, um, you hear this in, uh, the gnome uh, basically say, "Okay, that's uh, that, that should do it. Yeah, you know, just go ahead and just keep keep don't run into anything this time, okay." And uh, you hear uh, Charles Jr. Uh, actually talk back at this point there. Violet, this is the first time that you've actually heard um, Charles Jr.'s voice. He goes like, uh, yeah, sure, I, uh, I'll, I'll do my best, I'll do my best. As he uh, turns around, um, Charles Jr., you notice that his he's got a second eye now at this point here, and he... His both of them one one is still larger than the other, but it's still uh still you know present that he's he's has a second eye now, and he he's, he's both of his eyes go go uh you know stark stark wide, and he he runs over as fast as he can, and he actually jumps into your uh jumps at you, and uh, go ahead and give me a um let's go with a dexterity saving throw uh to go ahead and keep your balance from falling over from him jumping at you with happiness. Okay. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. yeah. So you're able Plus to. Plus four, so twenty-two. Holy cannoli! 
Uh, so you're pushed back just ever so slightly, uh, but you're able to go ahead and keep your keep your balance there as uh, as uh, Charles Jr. begins uh, uh, lapping at your face with his with his tongue. Uh, it kind of realizes what he's what he's doing, uh, and then he kind of hops, you know, almost embarrassedly uh, down out of out of your arms there, and definitely stops licking your face and uh, says, "Oh my God, it's been so long." Uh, it's uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out a good thing for for Charles here. Um, I'm thinking like Bobcat Goldthwait type type of voice here. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really good to see you, uh, uh, Astrid. It's, uh, it's really nice to have you back in my life. Uh, you, Ben's gone for so long. And, oh, my God. I, I had to get my own meat, but uh, uh, Travers was uh, really good uh, with me, and he's been teaching me stuff, and I've uh, been helping out. I'm doing my best. I'm doing the best that an author can. And uh, Barry's been great, too. Gave me this helmet. There's uh, this thing going on my head. Makes me... Makes me more like I was. It started. Oh my God! So much to tell you. Oh my God! I missed you. Missed you. And uh, he goes ahead and starts licking your face again. I hug him tightly and said, "I say that I was so worried about him." Um, he continues licking your face there. So Yay! You, 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 you taste like salted <laughs> pork and salted ham, but I'm not gonna bite you. I'm not gonna eat you. So you just you're really tasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've kind of been through it. Uh, lot, lots of fire, lots of uh, death. Uh, we're glad to be home. Oh, missed you. Missed you. He starts kissing you on the cheek. Um, he, he then goes in and takes you by takes you by the hand. Oh, let me show you. I got some stuff over here. Uh, come on over. Then he, uh, he, he going back to to your little corner, your little area over here at the uh, top of uh, upper left hand corner of uh, number eight here, where he, he shows you I kept everything just the way you left it, and I draw wrote you letters, and I made made you, made you paintings and and stuff. Uh, you look around the room and um, you find little uh, uh, parchments uh, of paper here strewn about, uh, where you notice kind of uh, the. Uh, as you start going through the piles, you notice that uh, uh, the writing is is very scribbled, but then becomes more and more refined as you see the uh, the postmark date uh, get uh, uh, closer and closer to the current time period. Uh, but strewn around the room, like all uh, you know, essentially taped or silly puttied against the wall, uh, you see a whole bunch of like uh, what you would consider you know children's drawings of uh, you and Charles. You know what you assume is uh, you and Charles hanging out. Uh, you eaten eaten meat, and uh, you know you see these little stick figures of basically you and him like fighting off you know red brands with their cloaks and stuff like that, Aww. and then you both like eating their bodies. You know, just very very you know kind of childish, that is very cute. childish drawing. This is, I love everything that you've done. Also, out of Game Dragoon, I sent mm -hmm. you another image from Shore. Oh, okay. Let me look at this here real quick. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. I look amazing. It's so beautiful. Use... <laughs> Is that like a TikTok filter? Is that? <laughs> it's on Snapchat. <laughs> oh my goodness! I get this long, like Fabio wavy hair and these kick-ass glasses. Oh, I look, I look like a sexy Karen. All right. You look like Thank Britney. You. It's it's Britney, yeah. bitch. It is. It is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, in in one of the corner, one of the one of the paintings or one of the uh, drawings that stick out to you here is a uh, instead of a uh, it's th uh, the Nothic essentially has three three fingers on each hand, and you see this like paint um, paint on this uh, you know, piece of paper in the the. Th almost basically you're able to to determine here through some some creative thinking here that it's actually it's a turkey he put his uh, put his uh, three-fingered hand on there it looks like a it looks like a, a turkey that's you know seen better days and it's it's really really you know on the childish side like a two-year-old or a three-year-old uh, made that um, um i love it i absolutely adore it <laughs> and I'm going to keep them in a very safe place. I'm going to okay. ha make a little binder for them, and I'll coat them in beeswax so they're protected. Okay. Uh, Charles Jr. also goes uh, out into the, the middle of the, the, ca the uh, what used to be the chasm here uh, in the very center that had all that necromantic, you know, bits and pieces coming out of it. Um, the necromantic glow is still there, but it's now replaced uh, by uh, a bunch of hanging meat. Um uh, 
Charles Jr. Uh, exclaims here, hey, it's, uh, I figured out, Barry told me, is... <coughs> it's hard to do with this voice, I need some water. Uh, is, I uh, got some help from Barry, and he made me do things, and, and we made, we hung the meat, and it's really good, and I, I, I learned how to can meat and do softer things, and, uh, it's really good, you should come, we should eat some meat sometime, and I missed your mommy. Oh, we'll eat some meat soon, I promise. Uh, in the chasm, you see just all different types of, uh, you know, venison, you know, deer, uh, different types of meat. Uh, not so much uh, meats of, you know, previous red brand ruffian or anything like that. Nothing nothing that would be, you know, non-kosher. Um, uh, Charles explains, I'm going to start, once again enough, I'm going to start a restaurant here, and then we'll be able to do, we'll do like, I'm going to call DJ Friday Ruby. Oh, that is perfect. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that is Barry's going to help perfect. me out. Yeah. Do you want to introduce mm. me to Barry? Yeah, sure. Could, could you do me a favor real quick, Mommy? Yeah. Uh, is it okay if I call you Mommy or Astra? I feel oh, weird calling you Mommy. Okay. No, okay. You're, you call me whatever you want. Could I you, will answer to could anything. You, could, you, could you crank me real quick? He, yeah. he turns around and there's a little, uh, almost like a, a key sticking out of the back of his head uh, that leads to that uh, kind of the halo that goes around his head. Yeah, okay, so I will crank it. Okay. Uh, as you hear the, the clicking noises uh, going around here, you hear the, the gears inside this, uh, inside this ring uh, that goes around uh, Charles Jr.'s head. They start to kind of whir up, uh, like zzzz. They start going faster and faster again. And he says, "Oh, good, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some, some food to eat here. Uh, we'll talk to you in a bit. Bye, I love you." And he kind of scampers off, um, scampers off. Be He's... safe. I make good decisions. I'm good. Yep. Be safe. I know you're good. <laughs> uh, so he's basically like a, a little kid here, and he scampers off. Uh, you. <laughs> uh oh. What? Uh oh. Guide me, guide no, me through what's, gonna, what, what your character's doing. <laughs> oh, the emotions! Because I've been separated from my family so long, I feel so much joy. Aww. <laughs> I wasn't sure what was happening. Yeah. Those are my emotions. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, I assume, Minnow, you're, you see all of this as well? You're... Are, are you looking for soup? Yeah, yeah, Mino, no. what what are you doing? Are you following? Yeah, I'm with... following around. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you oh, guys no. go ahead and make it into uh, to that section eleven. You guys wanted to hmm. talk to the gnome. Yeah. I will go down there okay. and introduce myself. All right. <laughs> Uh, as you walk in here, the uh, you see this gnome is uh, is uh, has a, a a series of you know uh, larger uh, wrenches that are uh, uh, get smaller in size, and uh, it's basically kind of like a like a jeweler's loop, but there's a whole bunch of you know larger you know mini wrenches, and they get smaller and smaller and smaller uh, as he's uh, they're almost like hex hex wrenches, um, but they get smaller and smaller, and he's he's kind of tinkering uh, on this. Uh, uh, on this uh, dog creature here, that's uh, over in the over in the corner. We're just in the theater of the mind, essentially. I just mm -hmm. love is that this... there's a crow named Rat. Is there? A, is that a crow? I think. Oh. <laughs> that's from the rat from the original story. Yeah, that yeah. was from the original story. Yeah. It... <laughs> oh my goodness. Yep. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. I don't know why. <laughs> Anywho, uh, you see this the uh, the the guy kind of turn around. He's like, "Ah, yeah, is uh, uh, Charles Junior told told me all about you like excessively." Uh, what do you guys want? I just wanted to introduce myself and learn more about what you're doing. Oh well, uh, yeah, yeah. I know you're you're Astrid, and you're obviously Minnow because you look pretty horny. Um, yeah, he extends out his, uh, his, uh, feet kind of, you know, scamper across the, uh, uh, the brick floor and comes over and extends out his hand. Barry! Barry Dingle! Hi. Bar 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 Bar
lovely to meet you, Barry. Ah, oh, nice to meet you. He kind of scampers, goes off uh, back over to the corner, starts uh, keep on working on the uh, mechanical item there. Is there anything that I can do to help you? Do you need any specific tools that I can grab for you? Ah, uh, not that I think. And you know, Charles, he told me that you guys you know lived here at one point, and uh, this is your place. Uh, but uh, uh, him and uh, and Travers hired me to go ahead and keep the keep the place running, and uh, gave me a place to stay. So now I uh, I make all the mechanical bits. All the all the you know pro lady, ladies of the evening, I guess the mechanical bots of the evening. Um, we don't we don't do hand jobs though. That's that's forbidden. We don't. I'm still working out the bugs. Still working out the bugs. Yeah, especially like it has to be really well oiled, but too much oil is bad for the machine. So it's yeah. like one of those you have to have just the right amount. Ah, you've you've done you've done work in the past too, huh? What, oh, what, yeah. what's, what's your favorite what's your favorite type of bot? So, I'm, <laughs> oh boy, um, I am more of a shibari, but I helped someone with their little workshop. It's very similar to this. Oh, yeah. Years and years ago, probably before I even met these uh, other travelers. That oh, that's pretty cool. That would... family. So, I yeah, used that... to do a lot more shibari than anything, but I know my way around a uh, workshop. Oh, cool, cool. Maybe you can help me out with this here. Here, lift, lift up the, lift, lift up this tail thing here. Okay. I lift it up. Okay. As you do, you you get the kind of the the shape of this uh, of this mechanical being that it's a uh, uh, you're sitting in front of here. Uh, it looks like it's a, almost like a mechanical tail that he's lifting up here as he uh, he takes the uh, the wrenches here and you know tightens things down and tightens things down and tightens things down here. He says there, yeah, that, that must be work here. You got to you got. Uh, it's kind of a dumb question, dude. You got you got some matches or something like that on you or something like that. I do. From well, we have. Uh, checking my inventory. Yes, I have one. one Eric, could match. you could you just go ahead and just reach in into this uh right right into that port right there? Just go ahead and you know okay. like put some fire in there or something like that. I I don't have mine with me. Like so, it's like uh. Pilot light. Almost. Yeah, yeah, pilot light. Yeah, keeps things going. Yeah. All right, I reach in and light it. Okay. Uh, as you reach in here, you finally kind of get an idea as to what uh, <laughs> what you're reaching into here, and the the mechanical uh, 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 creature that uh, he lifts up the tail fear for. It looks like a dog. Uh, it's a, just a giant mechanical dog here, and you're uh, you're uh, uh, probably like shoulder deep into its butt. Uh, as you're uh, as you're lighting the the pilot light in this uh, uh, in this dog, it, uh, and as soon as you light the the pilot light here, you kind of hear this uh, this hissing and uh, kind of you know uh, uh, gears starting to kind of crank together. You know, chick, 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 chick. as the uh, as the like dog. Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I've never played it uh, or heard too much about it. Anyway, I saw some gameplay. Didn't care much for it for some reason. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, uh, you go ahead and you pull your hand out of the dog's butt, and uh, the kind of, the dog uh, kind of whirls uh, whirls up, and you know uh, you hear the uh, 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 noise of almost like the internet noise uh, coming out of the out of the dog's oh, mouth. Oh, the dial up. Yep, yep. Basically, the you hear the the dial up coming out of the dog's mouth there. This is some pretty high tech stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And says, "Yeah, he'll take some time to to kind of warm up here. We'll we'll just leave him here. He'll he'll be he'll be finished here in a little bit. He'll he'll make us a, some 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 churls or something. So, um, mm. come on over here. Let me, let me show you guys. Uh, your your you guys saw the rest of the place, right? I mean, yep. Cool. So, and, uh, what what can I do for you? What else? Uh, do you guys need something? So we just got back, and I came back because I was worried about Charles Jr. I wanted to make sure he was okay while I was gone." But I'm very thankful that you were here to help. Oh yeah, yeah, he's doing fine. He's doing a lot, a lot smarter than when when I first met him here. He got that, uh, gave him that that circlet there. Worked on a long time for that here. He keeps on running into walls because he gets so excited about stuff here from time to time. You know, he's not very spatially aware, but you know, he's he, he, he does a pretty good job. Well, so, what if we put something like a one of the little rims from a barrel and a little device that would prevent him from running into things? Oh, say that, say that again, Astrid or Violet. So, 
uh, like the metal rims of barrels to like put around him, almost like a hula hoop to prevent him from acting like a bumper car without it being a bumper car. Uh, you see uh, Barry go, oh, that, oh I, I can't believe I never thought about it. You do your, know your way around, you know, uh, mechanical, you know, stuff. You know, I mean, yeah, I got a gyro over here. Let me go ahead and just take around. He goes, uh, he scrambles away and starts, starts hammering on uh, uh, pieces of metal on uh, in the corner there. Uh, he just he pays you no mind after that. So I look at Minnow and ask, shall we explore? Yeah. You can go first. Mm. Okay. I am following you into the unknown. <laughs> um. <coughs> you can tent in the kitchens. Uh, you make your way into the section number 10 here, and you guys kind of see it. it was basically left there kind of the way it was here for the most part, except it's a little bit more modern. Uh, there's tables and chairs here set up, uh, you would assume, for, for some of the staff um, that, that work there. Uh, you see, you still see all those sirene foam cups all, uh, all labeled, uh, kind of uh, all strewn about here, all in different, uh, different states of either cleanliness or uh, needs to be washed out uh, type of statuses there. Mm. Out, out of game later I'm going to put this all together so it makes it it's going to be furnished better than than what I'm coming up <laughs> with on the fly so that's cool I will stay behind and start washing some of okay. the uh, dirty cups alrighty uh, Minnow uh, as you guys uh, as you make your way towards uh, uh, section number mm -hmm. 9 there uh, you're met by uh, by Travers here in the room is ah, yeah, uh, what does Trevor sound like oh he's got the lisp or uh, the the to him, uh, Travers come over and says, "Yeah, we. I hope you guys like the place. It's, uh, it's. Uh, I worked uh, hard with uh, with the other guys here. I had some had some of the the Thunder Force guys. They uh, they helped us out too. Uh, you guys are more welcome. You know, this, this is your place after all. I'm just. I just look out for for stuff. I just I just told everybody I was a manager, and uh, they, they they listened. They listened. So it's a." Uh, uh, I just, it's, it's you guys' place now, I, but uh, if, don't, don't fire me. Don't, can I have, can I have a job here? Is that, is that okay? Can I, can I still have my job? Is, is that okay? Middle, please. Middle, please don't get rid of me. Don't kill me. Middle, please, please don't kill me, middle. And he's, uh, he's down <laughs> kind of uh, on his knees here at this point here, just sobbing and, uh, and kissing your, uh, your hoof. <laughs> I've got no intention of killing you. Good, good job. Oh, thank you. I'll be, I'll be so good for you. Oh, I'll be so good. I'm just a good boy. And he, uh, he kind of just uh, happily starts humping your, humping your leg. Okay, you can stop that now. Oh, okay, okay. I, uh, I got some cleaning to do. I just, uh, I'll do my thing. And, uh, thank you, thank you for the job. Thank you for not killing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And he, uh, he uh, scampers off as well here. <laughs> Violet. <laughs> <laughs> How to thank people in a socially appropriate way. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so yeah, you guys have a uh, fully furnished uh, hideout with a uh, sex dungeon on one side, uh, kind of reception oh. area on one side, and I'll make this look better for next time. So. Uh, Violet, I think it looks you know fantastic. still my room. Oh no, you guys all have your, your respective rooms Connie, which room did you have again? She was in 11, so where uh, Barry is. Okay, okay. Well, Connie, you, we, we can bring that up when we get to it. You're over at the tavern, actually. So, uh... We'll rock, pa we'll rock paper, scissors for it. You can you can talk to Barry about that when you, when you have a chance. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, does he go by? Does he go by Dingle by any chance? Uh, that never came up. He, uh, you do know that his uh, his first name is uh, Bartholomew, um, Dangle, Dangle Hopper. Hop. Yep, Dangle Hop. Yeah. Uh, but he, you, he just mentioned that he he goes by Barry. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and save this here. We'll do. Future Red Brand Hideout. That way I can look for it here. Alright. Uh, so, switching narrative wise back over to uh, Future Fandolin. Here we go. 
So, uh, Herbert and Calypso, you guys are still over at the uh, at the bar, yes? At the tavern? Yes. Okay. All righty. So I'm over at the uh, at the uh, tavern here. Uh, you walk in, and the the place is is actually it's also changed here. Uh, instead of uh, the barrels in the corner that you you remember, uh, it's actually kind of you know very you know very modernized. You know things have you know spigots on them. Uh, you can see that uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot more gear work uh, at at hand here, and that uh, um, that. The bartender really is there, just kind of as a as a chaperone, just to go ahead and make sure everything is uh, is working right there. Uh, you see patrons going over; uh, they go and pull a lever uh, with the uh, um, aforementioned you know, beer name on the on the lever, uh, where you see kind of uh, uh, you kind of hear uh, gears uh, kind of start wearing up, <clears throat> you know, zzzz, and then the uh, cup is uh, a mug is dispensed. With uh, that says uh, styry, uh, it says a happy Sh- Swimmin's day uh, printed on it, uh, and then that whatever beer is automatically dispensed uh, to the proper height uh, where the patrons uh, kind of come and go and uh, go back to their seat, and you know basically they they get their own drinks. Uh, you're greeted by a, a familiar uh, individual here uh, that you recognize as uh, Mr. Carp Toblin, uh, who's a uh, approximately 10 years older. Uh, he comes over and says, ah, I, I, I heard you guys were, were back in town. How, how have you guys been? Let's, let's, let's catch up. What's, what's going on? Carp, you're a bartender now? Uh, God, I, I took over the place here after, you know, mom and mom and dad passed and, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm all, it's all, it's all that's left here. You know, I just run the, run the place here. The guild. Uh, what's that? I can't believe you left the adventure guild. I, oh, oh, I, I do part time here. I figured, you know, keeping keeping this old place, you know, running, you know, you know, dad dad's final, you know, dad's final wish was, you know, keep keep the place running. So I just, you know, following in his footsteps. Not not, uh, okay. not to the fullest extent, because you know, dad dad got pretty crusty there at the end. He's uh kind of got overtaken by the uh the stuff he had going on downstairs. You know what I mean? Well, mm. yeah, that can happen. So Ironically. What? Herbert found a cure for such things while we were traveling. Oh, really? What What did you come up with? We don't, normally we just splash stuff with water. It's called the finger method. Uh, what's okay? What's what's that? It's where you take your finger and you insert it into the crack of your father. <laughs> There's a bit more to is, it than that. But. Is mm, that kind of sounds kind of what Dad would used to do? I mean, well, you know, I mean, now he would have you do it to him, and then, but you would be putting something else in there with your finger. Oh, like, like, like ale? It's like this paste, and like. Sorry, is anybody oh. else having a hard time hearing Graham? Yeah. How about now? Yeah, it's a little bit better. For me, anyway. Weird. Hang on a sec. In Discord, I had to kick you up to like 200% of normal volume so I could hear you. Hang on, I wanted to fix that. Give me just a second. Okay. How about now? That's Yay. better. Is yeah, it you... a lot better? Yeah. We can we can hear the sultry bass tones of your voice, at least I can. What about you guys? Yep. Okay. All good. I think I need to unplug and replug my microphone in. But I'll do that later. Okay. Because it, it'll mess up all my settings. 
uh, the finger method, you put your finger inside the crack of your dad, and you also insert some, like, it's like this paste, and it acts like, a, sort of like a lubricant, but it, you just leave it in there and don't do anything else. You just kind of... Put... I it... haven't figured out a better way of putting it in there, so that's why I say you got to use your finger. I mean, if you can he, figure out a different way. He, he kind of quizzically, you know, turn, turns his head, so it, does it always have to be the dad? Whoever it's... has the illness. You know, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just saying your dad. It's not particular to a father-son but, relationship. But why? Like, what? I'm not. I, I don't want to put my finger in my dad's butt. He's dead. It'll only work if if it's you. So it has to be. Uh, it always has to be the son. No, I'm, just you. I'm really confused. What are we putting in my dad's butt? It's anybody, really. But uh, <laughs> it has to be you. You have to be the one that puts it. In, in the butt. It's so I'm like I'm like I'm like the chosen one. I don't I don't I don't get. I'm yeah, really I discovered confused. it while we were on the. I discovered it while we were on the road. So, it, you know, I mean, it had to be you. It had to be you. Here, the, if the... you don't believe me, we will. <laughs> so the magic was in me all along. Is that? It's in your finger. <laughs> but what's on my finger? What what paste is on my finger? Well, I'm going to give you the paste, but it'll only work when you do it. Where did where did the paste come from? I make it. Oh. I thought you wanted to put the magic in him. <laughs> <laughs> Good soup. Take a drink. Goodness. Shot. 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 <laughs> and then. Yeah, speaking of that, Harp, how did exactly does this contraption work? Which one? Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, the dispensers? Oh, oh. the drinks. The yeah. finger? Yeah. Oh, well. Not the finger. I'm familiar with the finger. Oh. I'm <laughs> you are? <laughs> <laughs> familiar with another finger. He kind of looks at uh, Clipso, kind of raises his eyebrows, huh? 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 Yeah. <laughs> uh, I assume Calypso, you're talking about the the beer dispenser or the ale dispenser. Yes. Okay. So, like, oh yeah, we you used to go ahead and have have me you know serving behind the counter here, just like you know mom and dad used to, and uh, you know we had that the the gnome that came by. He's Barry. He's uh, he helped us out quite a bit. You know, modernize things here and and make things work better. Um, you know, we even have the in the back of the, the ale makes itself damn near. Uh, we just got to put the ingredients in the, in the chute, and it comes out, and then everything just comes out here. So the the patrons they just they just come over, pull the lever that they want, and they get the cup. I just I just do some some washing in the back of the cups, and that that's I'm just here kind of I just babysit. Other than that, the money just kind of rolls in. Which of these dispensers has mm. the strongest spirits? Oh, well, you well. I... I'm gonna need something a little stronger than ale if I'm gonna be hanging out with Herbert this afternoon. Oh, I mm, say no more. I hear you. Let me get the let me let me take care of this here. I you you and my parents go way back here. Let me let me get some of the the good stuff here. That stuff that that mom left and he goes behind the uh, goes around the corner where you guys knew the where the the kitchen was. So you kind of hear him ruffling around here and uh, you hear some uh, like a keychain come out and unlock a, a couple of locks there and um, he emerges out with a a bottle that uh, that's uh, black as night but almost has like a starlight. Um, you know, kind of shimmering, also almost as if the uh, the stars are like glitter, uh, but there's little uh, little specks of light uh, coming out of his ear. We don't we don't drink this you know very often or really at all, just about. But uh, we this mom said this is the strongest stuff that we've ever had, and only bring it out for for you know for when it's actually asked for. So I I guess we could crack it open. I guess you know. Bless her heart. I believe she gave me a glass of this once years ago. Oh. Well, we, with with Barry's help and uh, with Mom and Dad's help, we were able to to get things a little bit stronger than <laughs> I guess you could you could remember here. Uh, let, you, how much how much do you want? You like a just like a shot or like a full glass or what do you what do you what do you need? A finger. I'll take a shot, but don't put the bottle away. Oh, okay, okay. How about how about you, uh, sure. Herbert? Do you, do you want some more too? Um, no. Okay, okay. A anything else I can get you then? In the in the meantime, finger. Uh, okay. I got, he uh, holds out his finger. 
I'm gonna pull his finger. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I rolled a 19. Uh, carp. Oh. Uh, carp farts very loudly. He's oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> god. Um. Uh, carp Slippy, then goes ahead. Oh, and... No. Carp brings out a uh, shiny uh, shot glass and, and pours you a, uh, a shot of this uh, this liquid. Uh, and sets it uh, sets it in front of you here, uh, Clipso. You also notice kind of like these uh, uh, almost uh, uh, these little sparkly bits that are coming up off of the uh, what could be basically the vapors uh, of the shot. Ooh. Is that from your butt? Uh, no, they. <laughs> With Barry's help and Mom and Dad's help, they uh, they put some of this together here using some you know pretty pretty rare ingredients. You know. Well, I mean, it's just you farted. I want to know what came out. Oh, well, I I stay pretty clean back there, so it's pretty much just gas. You mind if I inspect? I do. I think you should let me inspect. I'm going to try to use persuasion. I mm. to to let him let me <laughs> inspect. Oh, go ahead and roll it, Graham. <laughs> that is a <laughs> that's a 16 he uh oh my god I can't believe you're doing this to NPCs uh Carp basically says yeah hey, we, could, we could definitely do this here why don't you come around the, the, the corner here and we can no no funny business now no funny business this is you I, I, I trust Strictly you scientific. trust me I'm a cleric and he uh, he takes you takes you around the the corner there uh, out of out of sight of the other patrons. Uh, he says, "I don't want to, wow. you know." Is normally we do this in the in the the doctor's office, but as we, yeah, you go around the corner here. Just come come with me, come with me. So you run. Yes. Uh, well, can we just do it behind the bar? I I really don't want to sour. I, I got a business to run here, you know. I just, um, you do it just I'm do gonna it out, out of sight. I'm gonna I'm gonna persuade. I'm gonna try to persuade him to do it behind the bar. Why? Because I don't want to go in a private spot. I okay. need I need I need more light. Okay. Alrighty. Are you low vision? Um it's well let's can we do it a little bit lower here? We could just here, I, I actually I got an idea here. Let's Barry set this up here later. He, he bends over here behind the, the counter here, pulls a lever. Uh you hear some uh some gears kinda chink 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 as the uh the, the bar level. Uh, the level of the bar here starts to kind of raise up higher and higher to where you can just see just uh, just the top of uh, uh, Carp's head from like the neck up. That works. And uh, he goes ahead and pulls down his pantalones and uh, shows you his butt. All right. Now you gotta spread those cheeks. We gotta make sure there's not nothing stuck between them. Okay. He uh, he does that. He's uh, he's pretty squeaky clean. Keeps up. Uh, mm. Keeps his house. Keeps his house clean. I'm gonna roll um investigation <laughs> to make sure okay. that it really is as clean as you claim it is. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Seventeen. It is squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. But you notice a little bit of a small uh you know, bulb uh uh bulbous little knob coming out of the uh, out of the side of the uh, out of the whole part itself. Okay, we're gonna do the glove test. Uh, Carp basically says, "Well, you, you you're the cleric, I guess. You know, just be careful." All right. I do the glove test. Okay. Uh, it sounds like something from her... Doctor Phil. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna need to talk to Doctor Phil after this. Here, I need some fucking therapy. Um, <laughs> I'll go with you. We'll right? trauma bond. It's fine. Yeah, and then we could do like a catch me outside. How about that? Um, yes. Uh, he basically bends over, and as you're doing your your inspection there, uh, Graham, from your your cleric days, you would actually identify that he's uh, that Carp has a, a bit of a, a little uh, small inflamed hemorrhoid. In his Ooh. nether regions. All right. Well, I'm done with the glove test. I'm done inspecting. I think I know what to do. The healing oh. rod. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> have you ever heard of the uh, rod of mending? I 
<laughs> no, it doesn't doesn't come to mind. <laughs> Wait, Graham, do you have a rod of mending? I don't recall that being. He's got a rod, but he's claiming to mend. Oh, okay, gotcha. I I I see. I see. <laughs> 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 I can't believe he actually yeah, yeah. said that. You actually have a rod. <laughs> I just, I don't necessarily 100 percent keep track of everything except for like a few exceptions of what you guys have in your inventories. So it's, <laughs> you're, I could have been drunk or high. Who knows? Who knows? Interesting. All right. <laughs> well, things that we got. I'm, I have a cantrip called mending. Okay. So are you gonna cast it on your rod? No, I'm gonna. Well, yeah, so. What are you eating, Graham? And um, are you sharing? Hemorrhoids. Yeah. Ew. Ooh, uh, uh, but no. This... That's the grossest thing you've ever said. No. I'm sorry. No. By far. No. No. Mindy. No. I'm trying. I'm trying no. to. I'm trying to help no. out our friend, the bartender. Uh, Buttberries. Tart. Tart, run away. <laughs> He's Dr. really Phil, clean now. Where are you? Save us. Actually, I'm not going to be able to use mending. Mending repairs clothing and armor and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you could use healing touch. I could, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm going to use healing touch. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you used thaumaturgy on someone's butt? Uh, I was wondering that too, actually. It depends on what you would want it to do, essentially. <clears throat> it probably could vibrate a little. <laughs> or a lot. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Graham, you're a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, shoot. I don't think it's called Healing Touch. Or is lay it? on hands? Oh, lay on hands. Hang on. Let me look up. Touch. Not the bad touch. <laughs> Shocking girl. That's a good. That's a good <laughs> song, though. Well. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Cure wounds. It's an instantaneous touch. Okay. So you're are you are you using like fingers or a hand? Yeah, I, I have to touch. I have your to fist, touch. You're him. just gonna punch him. You know, I'm gonna punch, no, punch him in the butt. No, no, no. There's what well, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna punch him in the butt. So <laughs> hey, I'm going. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, do I need to roll? Um, how it does says the, one D, How does it? Well, mean? it's just a. It's just an instantaneous touch. I I heal them and then, but okay. it's a one d eight for the amount of um, hit points I give back. But he's not afflicted by anything, so I'm just considering it's uh, healing him. Okay, yeah, I can see that. We could say it would uh, kind of patch things up. Yeah. So, um, I tell him I'm like, okay, close your eyes. And when I tell you to take a deep breath and then exhale, all right? I'm gonna count to three. Oh, oh, okay. He still has his pants around his ankles, bent over, and he kind of yep. takes takes a deep breath and closes his eyes. <gasps> One, two, and as I'm about to say three, I clench my fist and find uh, there's a, there's a there's a tub of lard in the corner. I dip my hand in it and I pull back out. And by the way, I still have my glove on. This. And uh, and I, I ball it up into a fist, and I say three, and I shove and I fist his his booty. I just I I fist him hard, and I cast cure wounds. Okay, uh, Graham, are you wearing a watch? No, <laughs> well, not anymore. Right? Because uh, <laughs> uh, right. it probably took it off. Right. Okay, you go ahead and cast cold wounds. Okay, <clears throat> um, you hear kind of like the, the uh, him stop holding his breath. It kind of <gasps> he kind of squirms a little bit, but then uh, 
you kind of feel he kind of straightens up a little bit. Uh, Graham, have you pulled out your your fist? I assume from his from his butt. Or are you just are you still in there? I'm still Never in there. Understand. Okay, uh, he kind of <laughs> clench clenches down a little bit here. Um, he kind of lets out a little bit of a whimper, uh, but then he says, like, "Oh, is it? Oh, good. the burning has stopped. That's it, oh, that's that actually feels a lot better. How did how did you do that? Uh, it's magic. I'll show you another magic maneuver, and I extend my my finger and I I poke him in the special spot inside, and then I pull out. <laughs> Okay. Graham, I want you to roll a d20 and give me a performance check. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, go ahead. This is why planning is not required. Yeah. Exactly. Nobody. Oh, my God. What's your modifier on that, Graham? <laughs> One. So is a 15. Okay. Uh, so you do the special spot and... Uh, my God. Uh... Carp's eyes roll into the back of his head, and his pants get wet. I can't do this. Uh, he 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 kind of scrolls away and goes around the corner and and kind of giggles and hides. It's, I I can't role play this out, Graham, with this special spot. Oh. You just you touch tu you touch this guy's fucking G spot. I mean he he I rolled he rolled gonna... a sixteen. I mean he's gonna come. I mean yep. <laughs> he fills the shot glass. It's, yeah, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. No, thank you. No, thank you. <sighs> <laughs> All right, Graham, now that you're sitting there with, uh, behind a, behind a bench there, what, what else are we doing here? I'm just going to turn to everybody and go, what were we doing again? Uh, you oh, just, yeah, was... you, the, the, all the patrons are, are looking over at you, and all they see is just uh, just the the top of your mohawk, mm -hmm. with a uh, kind of a dripping dripping uh, fist uh, that comes over just ever mm -hmm. so slightly from the from the top of the counter as it the the counter starts to kind of chink 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 mm -hmm. chink comes down. Uh, you just everybody in the all patrons wise just sees like a drippy uh, drippy hand of yours, as uh, everybody mm -hmm. just kind of looks at you funny, and people start to kind of finish their drinks and start to leave, it's... kind of. Is that a drippy no-no? <laughs> yes, that's, that's a drippy no-no. That's no -no. a drippy no-no, yeah. That's, uh... yeah. As people continue to look at me, I say, well, does anybody else have hemorrhoids? <laughs> uh, not for you. Uh, everybody still is kind of shuffling out. Nobody's, they're kind of, people avert their eyes a little bit. It, uh... is this I'm pouring myself uh, down as, the as one of the people kind of go, uh, Kind of shil uh, uh, saunter out there. One of them turns like like we normally go to the doctor for those types of things here. I, I'm I'm sure glad this place has does house calls. Does anybody want to do a drinking game with Calypso? Hell uh, yeah! The, you get a you get a couple of a uh, couple of eyes that uh, dart back over and kind of you know kind of get weary eyed. And one of them asks like is is it on the house or are we who's paying? Uh, Darren. Edermith? Oh, he's <laughs> he seems like a pretty pretty decent guy after all, I guess. Yeah, yeah, was, if, as long as he's paying, yeah, I'm drinking. Yeah, was, uh Calypso, you have uh three people uh that kind of file back in that uh, were covering up their butts at one point here. They're kind of filing in here, <laughs> uh coming over to and, uh, and sitting down at a table there, uh kind of expectantly here. Um yeah, say, uh, how, 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 how are we doing this? Uh, is it going to be like a shot for shot, or like a beer, or ale for ale, or how are, how are we gonna how are we gonna do this? What about the wine? They don't have to know that you have the wine bottle. Oh. There you go. Okay, since Carp is in, did indisposed, we're gonna do this the old-fashioned way. Okay. And I slide over the bar, so I'm behind the bar now, like a bartender. Okay. <laughs> And I grab a couple of the polystyrene cups, or three of them, because there's three of them, and I fill them up okay. with my wine bottle, and I slide them across the bar. And then I pour myself a sparkle shot and give them all a cheers. Okay. All right, and so everybody else uh, goes and toasts you there as well. as this. They all say, uh, here's the uh, first one down the hatch. And uh, they all start uh, start drinking here. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, Connie, go ahead and roll me a constitution 
uh, saving throw, if you would please. Oh, right, that's me. That's you. Yeah. Also, Calypso, are you also drinking the sparkly shot? Or are you just drinking <clears throat> the beer at the moment? No, I'm not drinking beer at all. I'm doing just sparkly shots. You're... Okay. I've had two <clears throat> of them so far. You've Oh, you've had two of them. Okay. Okay, give me a second. Do you have a bonus to Constitution, Connie? Plus two. Hmm. What was that? So you got an 11 there. Uh oh. Okay, and so far you've had two sparkly shots, yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Give me two more seconds here. <clears throat> All right. Um, so the three uh, three patrons in front of you here, uh, two of them start to get really drunk. You can tell that they've had uh, had uh, uh, had a couple drinks before, but the uh, the kind of the big burly guy, uh, who's uh, kind of on the on the heavier side here, he's uh, he's still doing pretty good. Um, taking the the drink here and he uh finishes off his uh, his ale and you know slams it down on the on the counter in front of you and this is you're like ah easy peasy i pour him another okay um the other two people are kind of they say they kind of acquiesce and say like we oh we've we've been drinking all day here for those part. like i i thought we could handle our our stuff here let me uh, you and you and this guy can can do it out here. We're we're kind of done here. Give give our best to, to Darren, and uh, they kind of you know kind of slosh uh, slosh off there. They're kind of holding each other up as they as they exit the bar here. And it's just you and this uh, this other guy here. So you pour him another uh, another drink, and uh, are you is you pour him uh, wine? Uh huh. Okay. And you're pouring yourself a wine, or are you doing another uh, sparkly shot? Um, I'm gonna switch to wine. Okay, <clears throat> alrighty. Uh, so you go ahead and switch to uh, uh, over to the wine there, and go ahead and roll a Constitution saving throw. Oof. <clears throat> Graham. Thank you, Graham. That's a fourteen. Okay. Did you add my? <clears throat> yep. Okay. So, uh, Calypso, uh, as you uh, down the uh, uh, the wine there, you feel it start to, to kind of take hold of you there. You're on the, you're, it's getting kind of hard to, to see things. Things are starting to get a little bit uh, blurry uh, for your tastes here. Uh, unfortunately, the other guy across the uh, across the, the table here, he rolls a one. Unfortunately, oh, man. I shit you not. I rolled a twenty. And he got a, a one for his constitution, and uh, you kind of see him in like a Indiana Jones kind of like. Uh, um, um, where the the lady in the bar up in the mountains and stuff like that is doing you know drink for drink shot for shot, and the uh, the other guy just you know completely just you know he hits the table with a loud loud thud, um, and completely passes out right there in front of you. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna <coughs> would be sleight of hand. I'm gonna pick his pockets. Oh, okay. I would say with a one, he's he's pretty out. Uh, <laughs> so wasn't expecting this. So give me a second. <laughs> what level you guys are level five. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, inside the, uh, you go kind of ruffle through his, uh, his things here. He doesn't, uh, have much, in, uh, for, for, you know, necessarily weapons or anything like that, but, uh, his coin pouch, uh, you're able to get to in the bottom of the adventurer's pack here, uh, that has, uh, 13, um, PP. What the fuck does PP stand for? Plat, no. Platinum. Platinum? Okay. Uh, he's got, uh, part, thank you, Minnow. I've completely forgot. I'm, I'm in, like, just getting out of, a. You know, young adults butt mode here and uh, getting in more into like regular dm mode here um so 
Calypso, you find uh, 13 uh, platinum pieces um, as well as 110 gold pieces in his uh, in his pouch there. Nice. 240 gold in other words. Okay. And I Is assume he you... identification or anything? I'm sorry, say it again? Does he have any identification or anything on him? Uh, yes. Uh, you see that he is, uh, uh, he has a small card in his, uh, wallet <laughs> that, uh, says, uh, he belongs to the, uh, the Bruiser Guild. Hmm. Okay. With a small picture on the side of the card, it's, uh, kind of looks like a guy with, uh, uh, little boxing gloves on, uh, like a missing tooth or two with a, like a, with a black eye and a, and a swollen lip. Okay. Well, I'm going to pocket those, and I'm going to skedaddle out of here before okay. he wakes up or anybody else comes in. Okay, you're taking the, the ID with you as well? No. Okay, you're leaving the ID. Okay. I just want to not leave. <clears throat> Alrighty. Wonderful. So you're, you're leaving. Uh, Herbert, are you leaving with her? As well, or are you sticking around? Yeah, I've I've done enough good here for. Okay. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! All right, uh, here as you uh, as you guys both uh, leave the, um, the the Stonehill uh, Stonehill Inn here, um, Leroy, you feel perfectly fine. You feel like you've done uh, done a good deed, as weird and odd as it is here. Um, Calypso, however, you feel. You feel uh, some of the alcohol finally take hold of you here, specifically um, those uh, those sparkly uh, sparkly shots that you took there. Um, you might want to write these down. Okay. Okay. For the next, hold on, hold on. Make mm -hmm. this. There's no seven-sided dice, so we'll do this. Uh, Calypso, for the next six days in game, uh, you understand the languages of animals. Ooh. And only magical weapons can harm you for the next six days. Wow. Uh, so she's invincible to physical damage. Correct. That means I can hit her with my divining rod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, if she shares that information with you. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> now I'm metagaming. So, yeah, so, yeah Connie, you, you, you know both of these somehow at this point. I can just feel it. That you, yeah, you feel that you could, you could definitely understand the languages of animals and that you definitely know that only magical, magical weapons can, can harm you. Can you just uh, help the audience by explaining to them where you feel it? <laughs> some no. somewhere somewhere in up. a very appropriate safe consensual place in the butt exactly well, that's, that's where i feel everything consensual. it's safe and consensual <laughs> exactly connie you feel in your butt that uh, you can you can understand <laughs> languages of animals and you definitely feel in your butt um almost almost deeper that uh, you can only be harmed by mag magical weapons Sounds good. So, do you, do you share this butt information? Sure. Okay. Graham, or uh, Leroy, uh, Calypso shares. Herbert. 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 What did I say? Leroy. Leroy. Oh, shit. I... Goodness gracious. So, yes, uh, mm -hmm. Herbert, uh, Calypso shares this uh, butt information to you. I would imagine just for flavor uh, in the form of a, a little uh, lady fart. Nice. Ew, no. <laughs> you said it with words. Again. Yeah. He was like, what was what that? <laughs> That's a little lady fart that tells you all the <laughs> secrets of the universe. Um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys make your <coughs> way out of the, the tavern there and uh, find yourself in the uh, town square. Okay. Now what? It's up to you guys. What do you guys want to do? I want to well, gather the I'm other gonna, two. I'm going to head back and um, I'm going to go see my room. And along the way, I'm going to see if there's any animals I can chat with. With your butt. Okay. I don't talk to them with my butt, Graham. I just <laughs> felt it. <laughs> I sense the magic in my butt. 
Okay. Oh, well, so you're, <laughs> Connie, you're you're going to. Oh my God. Uh, so you're going over to the. <laughs> um, you're going back to balls to go ahead and check out your your old room. And kind of sharing butt information. Yeah, and you're yeah you're kind of <laughs> kind of tooting along the way as you as you walk. You got to go to balls and share your yep. butt information. Yep. Yep. You're revealing the secrets if, of the universe. To balls. If, if the hideout is beneath balls. Does that mean you're going balls deep? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Minnow, good soup for the win. And what, what, no, and accurate but. statement. <coughs> uh, Calypso that makes and a better soup. Yes. <laughs> it adds more flavor. Uh, or I chunks. Don't like that. Uh, so, <laughs> uh Herbert and Calypso. Uh, as you guys go through the the town here, you're noticing all of the different uh, different businesses and uh, places that have uh, took root. Uh, you see, like the town's master hall has gotten a you know a makeover. Uh, you presumably uh, you know know this to be the the children's doing. Uh, you see, like the sleeping giant that had uh, uh, was the previous Red Brand Ruffians uh, establishment uh, has now been done over underneath new management, and it's got you know clean you know another coat of paint here. The the outsides look uh, look real nice. Um, you also see a, a new shop there that uh, you hadn't seen before uh, as you pass by. It's uh, li- uh, has a uh, uh, a nice little sign out front that says uh, Garfield's Great Deal Shop uh, as you uh, walk by over to to Balls. <clears throat> okay. No animals along the way. Um. Okay, oh my god, the the brawls are doing all kinds of things. Uh, Connie, you come across a squirrel. That's uh, a friend. That's kind of trying to bury a nut. Uh, where the squirrel <laughs> kind of kind of looks up at you and goes, "What? What did you just say?" In the butt. Hello, friend. Hi. Oh, what what do you want? You you're not gonna take my nut, are you? <laughs> no, you can keep it. <laughs> I can I can I can keep my nuts. You can keep your nuts. Oh, oh cool, cool. Protect your nuts. Is you do you, you, you don't have any nuts with you, do you? I check my packets. Um, no, I don't. I'm sorry. Mm, peanuts, cashews. I've got some herbs. Ooh, I could make a nest with those. What kind of what kind of herbs do you have? Oh shit! Now I'm on the spot. <laughs> um, do 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 do. Let's say. Um, Wormwood, Sage, and Wolfsbane. Ooh. The, uh, the squirrel kind of gets, a uh, you know, y- y- I'm assuming that you're able to kind of read squirrel body language at this point, too. Um, totally. Just, oh yeah, naturally, because you could speak their language, so you know body language. Uh, the squirrel kind of looks around and says, yo, don't get that out of the way. You don't, don't let the other see- people see that, just, or the other, the other, the other animals see that. You got... You have wormwood. That's oh my god! Just put that away. Put that away. And he kind of uh, you know takes it uh, takes it out of your hand here and kind of stuffs it in his pocket. <laughs> um, <laughs> is, why not in a squirrel gonna... pocket? There you go. Uh, he stuff. He's mean? yeah. He it's stuffs like it little... in his in his cheek. Yep. Yeah. Oh no! Is it a hallucinogenic? <laughs> Oh, I'm so, I'm, I'm so happy that you're like a, a, a encyclopedia of different herbs. Um, the the squirrel goes ahead and basically tells uh, tells tells you Calypso. He's like, don't don't tell anybody else you, you have this. There is, is you don't come across this stuff every day. And he's like, do you you uh, one of my manners. You do you want to do some of this too? Do you want to do you want to do some of it? Oh, honey, I didn't give you my whole stash. You feel free. Oh yeah, it's just a taste. I gotta buy the whole kitchen, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I could I could trade nuts and and stuff like that. Uh, as she, he's kind of rambling on about nuts and um, um, and you know not showing other animals. You see his eyes kind of you know start to dilate uh, a little bit uh, as as much as a squirrel's eyeball could. Um, what are you doing while this is happening? Are you just sitting there, kind of listening, observing, or? 
Yeah, I'm just observing. Okay. Uh, as the squirrel is uh, is kind of chattering on, his eyes get wider and wider uh, from a pupil sense, and he starts kind of hallucinating uh, uh, both nuts and uh, um, other creatures nuts trying to try things. to try. Yeah, lots of things. He starts uh, hearing sounds and uh, smelling colors. He was and, probably uh, hearing sounds before. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, but then the uh, then the squirrel starts to kind of start screaming about uh, about bats and uh, small dragons trying to you know come out of the sky and uh, dive bomb them, and he uh, tries oh. to go ahead and uh, comes to try to go ahead and uh... give me a second. Connie, roll me a d twenty, would you? Graham, roll me a d twenty, would you? Yeah. Eight. Wait, that was not the right. Was that the right one? Was it a D20? I think so. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Connie, the squirrel comes over and kind of cowers uh, at your uh, uh, at your ankles there and kind of runs up your uh, your dress there to, to go ahead and, and uh, uh, get out of the way of uh, all of these uh, small dragons and bats that are dive-bombing them. Oh, jeez. Some people cannot hang. So I just scoop her up and I stuff them <laughs> in my bag. <laughs> Okay, the the squirrel is kind of still sitting there, kind of you know, still tripping, tripping balls. He's like, oh, there's, there's other herbs in here. Oh my god! And he starts kind of digging around, making a making a bit of a nest. <laughs> Wait, right, I'm does gonna this make Connie a uh, Snow White? Yes. Good. Yes, I'm gonna go with yes. Okay. okay. I'm with my dwarf. I'm speaking with squirrels. I am Snow White. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, you guys continue on uh, your way up to uh, to the entrance of balls, and um, and make your way down uh, downstairs. So we'll go ahead and say this. Hold on, we got to do find was it future Fandolin? Here we go. <clears throat> and future red brand hideout. Okay. Oh, Violet, you typed in how to thank people in a socially appropriate way. Okay, that's from last time. Okay. Yeah. Instead okay. of humping. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> uh, duly noted. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Calypso and uh, Herbert, as you guys make your way down the uh, the steps uh, past the uh, that kitchen area that you guys are so accustomed <laughs> going down, uh, you're just kind of you know draw uh, taken back by all the improvements that have been made. Um, you guys basically see all the, the different things in the, um, in, in the hideout here, uh, that you guys, uh, heard before when, when I described it to the rest of the party here. You see the, uh, uh the lavish fountain, uh, the kind of reception, uh, desk area, uh, every, all these barrels have been cleared out here, uh, and you are, you're greeted by, uh, by Travers, who comes up with the, uh, the, um, uh, ruffled, uh, ruffled uh, satin uh, smoker's jacket, and uh, comes up like, oh, guys, it's, it's good to see you too here. The uh, uh, Astrid and uh, and Mino, they came by earlier. They, uh, they've been hanging out with uh, with uh, Barry and uh, and Charles Jr. I, you, can I get you anything? Can I do anything here for you? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Who, who did you just name? I, d I don't recognize those people. Oh, Charles Jr. He, uh, he's the Nazi that you guys uh, came here down here a long time ago with. He's the Nazi? No, not. Not. <laughs> You can't, I can't understand me with my fucking lisp. So it's a, uh, Nazi. There we go. It, it, it kind of sounds like Nazi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a Nazi down here. Yes. There is a Nazi here. Yes. Okay. And then one of the other people, I don't, I don't remember their names. Oh. Oh, he Barry. He's, he's been here a couple couple months. Yeah, well, I remember him. Like oh, you remember Barry? Yeah. And... Oh, do you remember Barry? And Terry. And Larry. You're thinking of Harry and Carrie. No, there was a Barry and a Terry and a Larry and a... There was a Mary somewhere, too. Oh, that must have been before I started working here. I don't remember those guys. Hey, do you have any hemorrhoids? I, not to my, I don't think I have a butthole. Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right. Well, 
Why don't you look for your butt and then I, 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 around? Us <laughs> goblins, as far as I know, we when we eat stuff, we don't poop or nothing. We just we just our uh, our bodies are so efficient. They don't they just eat things up energy wise. We gotta teach me how to do that. Oh, maybe someday. It's a closely guarded secret. I could. Uh, d nah, okay, let's let's. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Calypso. Here, let me let me show you around here. We'll give you a grand tour. Uh, so Graham, uh, knowing that your area was you know three, five, and six essentially, uh, you're actually treated from a uh, a definite upgrade from the last time that you were down here. Uh, and looking at Travers' work here, you see all manner of just the wildest, crazy BDSM shit that you've ever seen. Uh, all mechanically driven, all very uh, steampunkish. Nice. Yes. Hey, uh, Travers. Travers. Yeah. Travers? Yes, Travers. Travers. Let's. We need to find the Nazi, and we need to find a. I need someone who's been very, very bad and needs to be kicked out. And I have an experiment. Oh, we get we, we get those guys all the time. They're the perverts. Yeah, we get they're in timeout. Let me yeah, we can get to that here. They they like timeout. They call it uh, uh what is it uh, uh, sensory deprivation. But they yeah they're kind of oh, weird no. about this. I mean yeah he, 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 he come this way he come this way here. Yeah, yeah I just he, need one volunteer. He takes uh, your drippy, moist hand and uh, leads you over to uh, uh, room number six here uh, where you're uh, led into uh, three individuals that are bound, gagged, and uh, have their hands and, uh, and feet all tied up uh, in this room that has a bunch of uh, padding on the walls. Almost looks like the, the it's uh, almost like a weird foam. Uh, and he, uh, he closes the door behind you here. Uh, Calypso, are you here with him at the same time? Yes. Okay. Uh, you also walk into the uh, unusual safe words. Thank you, Violet. <laughs> oh my God. Um, uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, all three of the individuals also uh, are all uh, have uh, blindfolds on and stuff like that, and uh, are gagged and stuff like that. He uh, and walks. You guys all uh, all walk in and close the door behind him, uh, behind Great. yourselves. And uh, uh, Trevor says, "Ah, oh, here." I gotta get spit in my mouth. Uh, here we go. This is, uh, this is uh, where we, we, we do the, the deprivation. And uh, these, these are clients that are, are still here. But they've been naughty, though. They, they, are like, they, they, are like they well this. known to society outside these walls? Or, or oh, they... Excuse me. What kind yeah. of naughty? Do you mean just kinky or do you mean actually. Bad. Oh, yeah. The part, cool. part, part of the scenery here at Balls. I named it after your favorite word, Balls. As it's got exclamation point around it, but these these are paying patrons that they they they, they like to be quote unquote he makes air quotes mm -hmm. uh and very naughty mm -hmm. and and they're into this kink of uh, sensory deprivation and uh, right. we we leave them in the room for a couple hours uh it's an hours basis type of thing it's kind of like paying rent and uh they, we leave them in here till uh, they either do the safe words uh that they that they talked about at the at the reception desk. Uh, or they, uh, or they uh, decide to, to, you know, pay some more money, or they decide to do really whatever. So just they're paying customers there, and this kind of this kind of kinks, and uh, we keep them in this room until until they they run out, or they they pay us some more, or they're ready to go home. Are any of these people known to the town? Ah, uh, most of them. These uh, these these guys here, they they're not really. They're just kind of, you know, out of towners. I think I have to look at their records. All right, find me. I only want to deal with the out-of-towners. Oh, okay, let me see. Uh, give me a second here. Give me, uh, he kind of scrambles and goes uh, out of the room here after a few moments here, leaving you guys both behind here. He returns with a kind of a stack of papers here. Here is uh, the record here. Uh, we got um, uh, name name of person of... of Zuckerberg? What's that? Zuckerberg. There we go. Oh my God, uh, we have uh, uh, Zuckerberg, Ada. Tw uh, Zuckerberg, Adolf. Zuckerberg Tweeterman. Uh, uh, we have yeah, yeah. This guy's name is uh, Zuckerberg uh, Bookface. Uh, this guy's name is uh, uh, Longbeard uh, Tweeterman. And uh, this guy, he's uh, it's kind of a weird game. He doesn't have a last name. He's just named Google. All right. <laughs> uh, can they hear me? 
I know they're they got uh, sensory deprivation. They uh, they don't hear nothing. They don't see nothing. Uh, they're all tied up. Okay. So um, I need them to voluntarily give me a blood sample on a book I have. Mm -hmm. Voluntarily. Okay, okay, yeah, that's... Yeah, I can't take it from them. They've got to be open-minded to it. Man. It's kind of a consensual thing. Like, we're going to have to interrupt their session to, to, to do this. That's fine. But don't take their blindfold off. Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, so he goes ahead and uh, um, takes off the ear muffs that they have on and uh, openly asks a question. Uh, says, I'm sorry, sorry, guys, for, for interrupting your, your session. My, my most sincere apologies. Um... We have uh, an individual here who is uh, taking blood samples and uh, wants to see if anybody wants to uh, give their a blood sample uh, freely of their own free will. Uh, are you guys uh, up for it? Do you want to give a, give him a blood sample? And, uh... Oh, that one dropped in my lap. Okay. Uh, all three of them kind of, uh, kind of perked their ears. They all rolled less than a ten. Um... They all uh, kind of, you know, kind of shake their head like yes that they're they're willing to. They think it's kind of a, uh, kind of a little bit more kinky, like hey, uh, give blood, bloodletting. Um, okay. <laughs> and so uh, he says, hey, uh, uh, Travers basically goes over to you and says, yeah, yeah, they're, they're all pretty willing. Uh, this is, uh, how, how do you want to do this? How do you want this to, uh, to play out? Uh, put their earmuffs back on for just a little bit. Tell them to hang on. I have to do something real quick. Okay, uh, give me a second. Uh, let me just, uh, hey, hi guys. Uh, just sorry for for interrupting her again. Uh, I'm gonna put your headphones back on, and uh, uh, you should. Uh, you're gonna feel a prick, I guess. The word blood comes out, and uh, we'll we'll be right with you. Give me a second. Uh, they uh, all nod. Well, the yeah. earmuffs go back on, and uh, Travers goes over to you. Okay, I'm gonna uh, pull the book out and turn in the corner, and whisper to Dirty Sanchez. Dirty Sanchez. You want um, one, two, or three yeah. volunteers? Oh, you got oh all three of them. Oh, my. oh, and they're willing. Oh, that's now, that's that's different. If uh, you if I all, give you all, all three, them, that's what will you do for me? Oh, well, that that makes it so that the 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 uh, bond between you and me is uh, is permanent. It's a uh, it's a, a bond that we that we share together, and I'm all yours. I could be I could we could fall in love and go for us anywhere. I just we could we could be together forever, and I could do anything for you, whatever whatever you, you want, whatever you want, your, baby. Your beard and bald head, all all everything. Oh yeah, everything. You can have all of me. Uh, okay. Yeah. And the dirty Sanchez. So that's that's my name. You could. Do you want to change my name to something? No, I just want to get. We're gonna do. You're, we're gonna do the dirty Sanchez all night long. Oh so. yeah, we could we could totally do weird wicked stuff. Yeah. There's going to be some weird stuff. So let's go yeah. and, uh, okay. So I'm going to close the book and then I'm going to turn to Trevor's 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 yep. Trevor's and say, all right, I'm going to bust out my, Oh, do we have a needle? Do we have uh, no wait clip? So can I have one of your arrows? I have a short sword you can use, but first, Travers, do patrons sign any sort of waiver in the event that their experiences get a little out of control? They might die. Like, yeah. Uh, they, they sign a waiver at the beginning, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it covers accidents, uh, accidental stains. Uh, some of those things are really hard to get out. There's a, there's a finder's fee, uh, if they smoke in the room. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing that necessarily covers, really, I think, death, but we've never had somebody really die down here. We've well, we've kept it pretty safe. Well, if you say but accidents, I think that's yeah. uh, yeah. open-ended. Are you talking about li liability? or it's, it's a liability clause that we're not responsible for anything. All right, and I hand over my short sword. Yay, all right. Now I'm going to walk up behind each one of them and uh, pull one finger... Out of the first guy, poke it, pull out one finger to the second guy, poke it, pull out one finger to the third guy, poke it, and then open up the book, and I'm going to start tracing their fingers over uh, one of the pages from the first guy, the second guy, and third guy. Okay. 
Um, Graham? Um, give me a second here. Uh, you hear Dirty Sanchez uh, in the back of your mind here. What about what about those two? Are they volunteers too? No, it's just these three. They oh. are out of town so and can, they volunteered. We should leave them alone, right? We need to leave alone the people who did not volunteer. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Let's. Oh, yes. Perfect. Yes. Oh, my God. This is so amazing. Graham, I need you to go ahead and roll a constitution shaving throw. Oh, wait. That's the wrong one. Sorry. No. That's right. That's right. Violet Take your time. Sorry. That's still not the right MMM one. MMM good soup. Oh, there we go. That's the right one. <laughs> Oh, 19, uh, plus two, so 21. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Graham, you lose control of your body, essentially. Um, <laughs> the book takes a hold not only of your, your soul, but of your body at the same time. And something very strange happens. Uh, your vision goes black, and you hear this musical melody... Uh, that plays in the back of your mind, almost as if you're being serenaded. Um, <laughs> give me a second here. What do liability clauses cover, <laughs> Violet? <laughs> <laughs> Not this shit, I tell you what. Uh, Graham, I'm going to send you an MP3. <laughs> and you mm. hear in your in your head... A, let me bring up a message here. <gasps> oh, Violet knows what this is. All right. Okay. ASMR? Yes. Better. <laughs> uh, you hear this uh, uh, this song in the back of your head. It's very whimsical. Um, oh, is it, did it upload? I think it uploaded. Uh, but as you start to hear this uh, um, this music start playing here in your head, uh, you you get to see Dirty Sanchez just as you imagined. Uh, the bald head. The describe Dirty Sanchez again for everybody who's listening. Uh, Dirty Sanchez. I had Dirty Sanchez. <laughs> Violet's gem. Uh, Dirty Matt Sanchez. <laughs> Uh, Dirty Sanchez, Sanchez has Sanchez the red beard. Has has bald a red head. beard, a bald head, and a Dirty Sanchez. Okay, and a Prince Albert. <laughs> if yeah. memory serves correctly, and yeah. is <laughs> Prince Albert, and is a female. Yes, and, and a female. Okay. Okay, um, you are basically imagine yourself kind of holding holding hands each other's hands and kind of spinning in a circle, almost like uh, carefree, just like you would hear in the in the movies, or just like you would see in the movies of you uh, you both of you kind of you know going on a picnic and you know kind of swinging each other around, dancing together, enjoying life, um, but all the while. Uh, you guys are kind of in, uh, locked in each other's embrace, looking into each other's eyes very deeply. Um, how to tell your friends that you're re that you <laughs> you repossessed you're repossessed um, to everyone else in the room here uh, Travers and Calypso uh, and that's basically it they see your eyes turn your your pupils dilate but they dilate to the point to where they can't see any of your other eye as well um, as well as this um, dark purple flame uh, that kind of seems to emanate brightly from from your eyes as the once the blood hits the the pages <clears throat> that's what everybody kind of sees to the uh, in the outside there uh, at, at the moment here uh, kind of switching back to your uh, narrative part here as you guys are enjoying each other's company and and having fun and stuff like that what you don't notice or what actually do do me a favor give me a perception actually you know what uh, yeah g give me a perception give me a perception <laughs> uh, natural 20. 20. Oh, goodness. Um, you notice everything here. So as you're just enthralled by it, it seems like days go by. And as you as you guys are enjoying each other, uh, each other's company here on, on the picnic here, the 
uh, all the different plates and stuff like that are are uh, filled with like intestines, and there's there's blood just spewing from uh, from uh, wine glasses, and the uh, the ground is made of uh, of um, instead of where you would normally see grass, you see uh, people's hair um, that that uh, come up there that uh, you actually realize are, are actually uh, scalps uh, of all the uh, people on top of this giant massive uh, pile of bodies. What is this here, Violet? What is in black pudding? No, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, essentially, you're, you're seeing in the background of, of you and uh, um, Dirty Sanchez hanging out, you're seeing all this uh, different viscera and piles and mountains of bodies and just blood and gore and guts and just unspeakable manner of, of you know individuals being tortured and killed in front of you guys. And you guys just both kind of cackling and laughing and just have a gale of a fun, gale, gale of a fun time. It's like, it's like a scene from Hellraiser. Exactly, exactly. Just like Hellraiser. Absolutely, absolutely. And as this song is going by here, you know, I'll just play it on the stream here. Bear with me here. Oh, I already played it. Is, Drake, is that you singing that, Dragon? He's young and you're so beautiful Here among the shadows Beautiful lady Open your heart The scene is set The scene. breezes sing of it can't you get into the swing of it, lady? When do we start? When the lady is kissable and the evening is cool, any dream is permissible in the heart of a fool. The moon is high and you're so glamorous And if I seem over amorous lady What can I do? Yes. Good job. Yay. Bravo. Uh, flowers. Yes. <laughs> uh, Graham, you listened to the to the MP3, yes? As I was yep. describing kind of all the, the viscera and you know, unspeakable things happening. Yep. Um, <clears throat> as all this is happening here, and is the crescendo here, you guys uh, essentially um, see yourself with... Uh, Dirty Sanchez on a on a pedestal as you both exchange rings onto each other's fingers, uh, almost as if you guys are getting married. As you see uh, waterfalls uh, in the background of just blood and viscera and all just kind of the inner organs all being chopped up and kind of coming over a a, a waterfall as well as all of these different types of fountains you know spraying mm -hmm. up in the crescendo of uh, of your guys's essential bonding uh, at this point. <clears throat> um. And you essentially uh, come to. Uh, we'll switch here as uh, as uh, uh, Herbert, as you guys were seeing us in your uh, in in your head, essentially with this uh, um, pairing or bonding uh, that you guys are doing. Uh, Calypso and Travers are treated to um, the eyes of Herbert going black with that purple um, purple flame. Uh, that's brighter than anything that you guys have seen before here as his body um, begins to uh, kind of morph and shift a little bit uh, and he's taken over um, by this book this book uh, kind of you know molds and shapes um, you know into his uh, what's your dominant arm Graham right or left right okay uh, you see this book kind of conform to the his right arm almost as if it's a um, uh, um, Oh, I can't remember the name of the the piece of armor. It's um not a gauntlet. Um, part of the body. Uh, like the forearms, right below the wrist, you know. I braces. Yeah, there you go, bracers. Uh, you see this book. Uh, the the uh, 
uh, back spine of the book, uh, all the metal starts to kind of lift off as if it's uh, appendages that then go ahead and wrap around his um, uh, arm area, forearm, right, right about here on the stream, um, that then kind of molds and shapes. It looks very... Um, Almost looks like if it's uh, uh, slightly burnt, uh, slightly wet. Uh, think of it almost as if it's... Uh... Dear Lord, who's doing this in the background? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Um, oh, hey. It's it's very Spawn-esque. Think of, think of like, uh, the movie Spawn that they came up with a long, long time ago. Uh, and all of it, uh, all of the, the kind of uh, uh, organic, uh, disgusting bits kind of forming into this... Uh, um, Van brace or whatever that's on your uh, cuff that's on your on your uh, right arm here. Um, in addition to that, uh, what Travers and Calypso are treated to is that you cast a finger of death. Why does that be finger? <laughs> uh, you cast finger of death uh, three separate times. I didn't have the spells in front of me here. I was going to do that later here. But I'm just going to say Finger of Death. Um, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me do this properly here. Finger of Death. That's a big spell. Is it? Mm, it's like level 7 or 8. Oh, While you're looking that up, I'm just going to yep. say that as soon as I see him start to, his eyes glaze over, I dipped out into the hall and yelled for Astrid and Minnow to come because something's wrong with Herbert. Finger of Death is 7th level necromancy. Give me two more seconds here. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys, uh, Graham, you cast yep finger of death. Um, you also uh, on the on the first guy. Uh, and he, uh, he basically instantly you know, keels over, uh, instantly dying. Um, uh, you also uh, cast Time Ravage on the second guy, at which point uh, Calypso, uh, you're able, you are bearing witness to this the the entire time as this is happening here, uh, where the second guy basically, uh, uh, the second and the third guy basically go ahead and age before you, um, basically kind of shriveling up to to nothing. And uh, in addition to that here, um, uh, as uh, Time Ravage goes off here, um, you also see then um, uh, Graham's hand kind of raise up with this uh, kind of greenish, uh, yellowish, um, uh, bright sphere uh, that then casts True Resurrection, uh, where he, uh, on, uh, on the two last two guys that just aged to death, uh, where Graham then comes over and uh, decapitates both of them. And then uh, the uh, innards become their outards. They basically turn inside out, more or less. Uh, the room is covered in all of their bits and pieces, as well as you are, both Travers and Calypso. So yeah, uh, you guys yeah. find yourself in this uh, small room, uh, covered in all kinds of sick, and uh, yeah, Graham, you are now uh, you are now uh, bonded uh, with uh, with uh, Dirty Sanchez. Fantastic. What does that mean for me then? <laughs> well, you are permanently bonded with uh, with Dirty Sanchez to where you can um, cast. Um, you can go ahead and cast uh, Time Ravage uh, once per week. And you can also go ahead and cast uh, uh, Finger of Death uh, once per week. Time Ravage. How do I find that in D&D uh, &D Beyond on my character sheet? Uh, you would go into, spell? yeah, spells. 
Alright, I'm under spells. Manage spells? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Some gnome spells. Alright, well, I got something to look up. Okay. So those are going to be once per week that you're going to be able to go ahead and cast those. And it's called Ravage what? Yep. Uh, time Ravage. Time Ravage and Finger of Death. Finger of Death. Actually, once you know what? That's uh, once per... This would be every session. Let's go with uh, once every two weeks, actually. Okay, so every other session. Yep, every other session. <clears throat> Providing that, you know, assuming like we... A week has passed in game that this has happened. So, sure, sure. Okay, we can go over the both of those spells afterwards as well, if you would like. Yes. Okay, but uh, you do not have uh, true resurrection. Um, Connie and or uh, Calypso and Travers, you guys both basically see this uh, happening. You guys are covered in sick. Uh, Travers uh, begins to vomit violently uh, after seeing all of this. Uh, Calypso, what are you doing? As you see all this uh, transform and, and happen. Um, I screamed out into the hallway for Astrid and Minnow to come play. Okay. Astrid and Minnow, uh, you hear yep. uh, but your, both your names called. It echoes uh, through the hallways. Uh, I assume you both come running. Yep. Okay. You guys, uh, I assume, are going to be in this hallway? Graham, you're still inside the room. Travers is still inside the room, still vomiting. So yeah, Connie, you both you have uh, or Calypso, you have both uh, Minnow and uh, Astrid. Both uh, both came to you. I have no idea what just happened, but it was horrible. She's been drinking too much. Uh, Minnow and uh, Astrid, uh, there's a smell of like copper that hits you in the air and it's it's thick is this it's all it's almost palpable actually you know what it is palpable you huh. can you can you can taste that there's blood in the air literally it's <laughs> And then someone start cooking without me. Okay. Uh, Herbert, <laughs> uh, you are not covered in blood. You just have that uh, thing on your arm. What's the thing on my arm again? That's, that's what the uh, the book uh, transformed and, uh, and uh, bonded to. You. The book is on my arm? The book is now uh, on your arm, yes. And it's a book on my arm. It's uh, it's molded and shaped to where it's uh, basically a uh, uh, van bracers. Is that is that right, Minnow? Van bracers. Yeah, just braces. Yeah, bracers uh, around your uh, around your uh, your arm from basically your uh, from your wrist uh, to your elbow is now covered in the uh, uh, in this what once was the book. Think of it as like uh, like spawn type of material. Ooh, that's pretty cool. So it's almost uh, almost partly living. Uh, it's blackish red in color. Um, it has like a, a, a veins going it's through like it. The that zygote. Are... Yep. Venom. Yep. There you go. Exactly. Just like that. Yep. Uh, but you also see like uh, veins kind of throbbing and pulsating uh, through it as it kind of molds and shapes, but still, still, veins hard, like hard a, as a rock. Like a giant pen. Hard it's... and veiny. Yep. It's hard and veiny. It's a, it's a hard, basically it's a, a hard material that also has a kind of like an organic uh, a bit uh, part about it uh, that you can kind of see pulsating and uh, has has veins. It's almost as if it's uh, it's living. That's pretty befitting if it's uh, going to be attached to me. Yeah. Hard, veiny, right. and fleshy. That's right. I wouldn't want it any other way. Okay. So what are you guys doing? I'm going to explain to Violet and Minna what happened, emphasizing the fact that 
the people did volunteer, and we didn't realize that it was going to be more than just a few drops of blood. You did And then all hell broke loose. I had a feeling the whole time. Uh, Trevor oh. emerges from the room, uh, still violently vomiting. Uh, he's... <laughs> he, uh, he continues going here. Oh, it's going to take forever to clean out. What did I see? Oh, my God. Uh, as he uh, he kind of goes through that uh, secret entrance and uh, continues on here. He's uh, he's going off there. You can hear him vomiting. Mm. I'm going to yell over to uh, Travers. Keep Charles Jr. safe. Keep him away from here. Uh, we'll, we'll do. As he vomits again. <laughs> What do you guys want to do? No, I want to go have a shower. I love that. <laughs> Think we can say that we've all trauma bonded now? That sounds accurate. Good. So, ooh, yeah. Uh, Graham, once all of this has happened here, uh, I need you to go ahead. What uh, alignment do you have? Oh, you know, that's a good question. Mm. I've been wondering that myself. So, uh, Divine Domain uh, alignment is... Have... On your original character sheet, it says Neutral Good. I don't know if that has changed since you've been leveling up. No, not as far as I know. But I have a feeling it'll change now. Oh, it sure will. It sure will. Uh, you are currently... One second. Oh, Jesus. Um, Aligned I'm evil, uh, I'm going to guess. It's, uh, you, you are on the evil spectrum at this point here. Um, you're at the lawful evil. So follow the law, but if it's an evil choice, I have no problem doing it. I will leave that up to your discretion on how you want to handle that. Oh, my hands will be full of something. Uh, Graham, as you're in the hallway, uh, just as uh, Calypso says, oh, I need a shower, uh, you hear um, um, slurping noises as almost as of like a licking of lips. As uh, you start to hear uh, uh, what can be uh, construed as uh, Dirty Sanchez, basically, like, ah, and like, kind of, kind of mm, as, uh, as you hear, like, like uh, sleeping, sleeping noises. Hmm. Okay. Right. With a kind of a trail, trailing off, uh, kind of a, a um, um, exhale of, oh, you were amazing. Hmm. And you hear sleeping noises. All right. Okay. So, Clipso, uh, you're going to get a shower? Yes. Okay. Uh, Middle, we... what are you up to? Do we have showers down here? Oh, yeah. Travers would have, uh, would have shown you the, the showers. Um, they're connected to the dungeon, the um, the sex dungeon portion, uh, labeled uh, recovery room. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> wear, uh, wear shower shoes. Yes, very much so. Hmm. Okay. So we're right at the two hour mark, two hour and two minute mark. Do you guys want to call it there? you guys want to go a little bit more as to what you guys are doing in the meantime? or I kind of don't know what I want to do. <laughs> Was yeah. that an okay. entire dice bag? Let's, 
Um, all of a sudden, you guys hear uh, you uh, see this uh, small gnome come around the the corner. Um, says, "Ah, what's what's going on?" And he said, Trevor says there's an emergency, and he was just vomit everywhere in my office. Oh my god! It's, it, oh my god! Just what is this? And he uh, kind of peeks his uh, peeks his head into the room. He's, "Oh my god! Oh my what ha- what the fuck happened in here? Oh my god! Oh whoa! What what did you guys do?" He looks uh, expectantly at uh, at all th- uh, all four of you. Um, I'm sure that I I think that our party member got possessed. Yeah, it seems a bit weird. <laughs> I don't I don't have a lot of context, but I keep hearing dirty Sanchez. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it was like the life force was sucked out of them. Oh, God. Well, could you have been more cleaner about it? I mean, come on. It's going to take had forever. No control. It's, it's, that's that's going to be a Herbert question. That's Her- not an Astrid question. I Her- was brought into this after the fact. Herbert, this is going to take uh. ages to clean out Herbert. <laughs> what? What's going what? on? Herbert, what? Maybe, What's from? M- Maybe in this area we can lay down like plastic wrap, like kind of like Dexter. Oh man, I'm gonna have to, oh, I'm gonna have to set this thing That's to deep idea. clean. He uh, brings out uh, a small ball, uh, actually uh, three balls out of his pocket that are uh, a silver, uh, uh, kind of like a silver gold, and uh, he shakes them around. Uh, they make like little jingle, uh, jingling uh, ball noises, like uh, uh, Foshigi balls. Oh. And he, uh, <clears throat> oh yeah. And he uh, tosses all three of the the balls into uh, into the room covered in blood, where they roll around, and then uh, um, uh, gears uh, you hear gears start to whir and kind of chink 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 chink, as the uh, the three balls turn into uh, three little Roombas, little uh, 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 steampunk Roombas that uh, start cleaning the room. Um, they don't have much of an effect. Are those entire dice bags? <laughs> that's, that's what I said. <laughs> that's what I'm Oh my God. Been <laughs> um, as these uh, little robots start kind of whirring around the room here slowly, uh, not having much of any effect on it, he says, ah, we're going to uh, we're just gonna close the door. Yeah, uh, uh, Barry closes this the is, door and says, oh, we're just gonna, no, no rectangle. I'm just, we're just going to leave him in there for, <laughs> oh, it's going to take days. Oh, it's going to take days. To, oh, I can... And Barry vo- violently vomits in front of you from the, finally the smell gets to him. He says, oh, God, oh, I, I need a churro. Oh, I need a churro. And he, uh... You really want to eat after that? Um, oh, oh, getting violent. Oh, I've got to have something to put back in the tank, you know what I mean? He, uh, snaps oh. his, he snaps his fingers twice as you see this, uh, that uh, mechanical dog, uh, come around the corner and kind of ching, 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 uh, but, uh, almost silently, um... As the 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 uh, mechanical dog, uh, he says, "Ah, we need Charles. We ah, I need a churro. Give me a churro." As the uh, the <laughs> churro Charles, as the as the uh, the no, robot uh, the robot dog, uh, you hear uh, uh, mechanical uh, arms inside, kind of clinking and clanking together, and then the uh, um, the mechanical dog basically poses like a pooping. Uh, stance like sideways, kind of like that pooping, you know, dog uh, type of thing. The tail kind of <laughs> curls up at the end, and uh, you see a churro, uh, fully formed and uh, and already cooked. Oddly enough, uh, ex- exits out the uh, uh, the butt of this dog, and uh, Barry reaches <laughs> over and grabs it, there. and uh, the tail kind of shakes as this small compartment uh, opens up and in uh, part of the the, the tail. Uh, and sprinkle cinnamon sugar on it, and he says, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> Barry, Barry takes a big old bite. You guys, you guys want one too? Uh, yeah. I'll take one. Okay, okay. Hard pass. I'll take um, one. Uh, I don't have a name for the dog yet, but there will be one. Um, he uh, name snaps. Is churro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, churro the dog. Yep. Uh, well, let's call him Churro. Why not? As the uh, Barry snaps his finger, what the fuck, guys? Um, as dear lord, there's cups. There's a there's a red brand ruffian, pink dice everywhere. 
There's oh, there's even a three of five slave in there. Goodness gracious! What? Is that Slotty? Is that? We got... I think I saw Let's Slotty in the there. Previous campaign. Yeah, that's. Our previous session. Well, that that'll save me loads of time. You know, cleaning this place up to put in different props. <laughs> there's. Oh goodness gracious! Anyway, you see uh, Barry uh, snap his fingers uh, one more time here as the uh, the dog uh, looks up and uh, looks over to Barry, and uh, you hear that uh, internet noise uh, again here. Clip, so you don't hear uh, the internet noise. <laughs> what you hear from the uh, this internet noise actually sounds quite familiar to you. Uh, it sounds like, okay, three churros coming up just for you, boss. Love you. As the uh, dog takes the uh, same stance and hearing you hear the... Uh, <laughs> As the uh, little churros start to to pop out here for for each one, uh, oh, so she's like talking Calypso's, to Churro. Uh, Churro is very polite. He's well trained. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's made it myself. All the programming, all all came from me. And the farts? Oh, those are those are optional. They sound like Calypso's farts. They stop they, it. Oddly enough, who knew? <laughs> Did you follow her around while she was talking I, to animals? There's, I. You, the farts could be programmed to be something else. I just thought it was funny because I, yeah, the mechanical dog and all. It's, it could be something else. I could, I could change it. Can we make another sound and have it go? Boy, yo, 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 yo. I, uh, that takes some time to program it here. Let me uh, switch it here to the other one here. He, uh, takes a little like a key fob out of his, uh, out of his pocket and uh, hits a button and the, uh, the internet noise, uh, sounds up, uh, sounds loudly. Uh, Connie, uh, you hear the, uh, hear something different. Of course it says, um, uh, churro completion act, uh, churro completion noise change to as the uh, as the the churros come out, yep, it's the uh, that that uh, yep you got it. That's the noise. Dixieland. So yeah, you guys have all had uh, you guys get churros. Yay! Yay! Uh, guys, I'm gonna call it at this point. I got I'm running on fumes like improv wise mm -hmm. that. Uh, <laughs> Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would you guys agree? Because <laughs> yes. that, that was a lot of action-packed session. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, we, have, we covered a lot of ground. We did. We did. Opposed to being stuck in a room for a while. That's right. Oh, That's like right. What? Uh, so yeah, everybody in the <laughs> chat. The, that was. When did this turn into Twister? It's always been Twister. I. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of all over the place here. Uh, anyway, everybody, that was that was it uh, for this week here. Join us next week, uh, hopefully on Saturday again. Cross our fingers that we everybody shows up. Uh, other than that, here you can reach out to our sponsor at Love by Stella on Facebook uh, to go ahead and get your custom stuff here. We actually had uh, uh, she just finished a butt uh, for our buddy uh, Agent Taco, um, and that butt has uh, a thong that comes along with it here. I don't. Uh, Actually, it's, it's in the other room here, but I'll be sending that out here, um, here shortly here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and play you guys out to the Love by Stella advertisement here. So check her out, definitely. She's uh, she's looking for, for more uh, you know more, more stuff to do. And uh, if you have anything that you could possibly think up, uh, give her a ring, give her a shout, give her a hoot and holler. Um, other than that, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, the sponsor of this episode is Love by Stella. <laughs> Either guys and gals, I'm super excited about our sponsor because they make such cool oh, shit. items and decorations that you are just not going to be able to live without. Got a new baby that's on their way into your family? Then check out this baby bonnet and booty set. How about this cool baby cocoon with hat and mittens? And for you new parents out there, how about a crochet sleepy head? Just sleep with a sleepy head for a few nights and lightly spritz it with your deodorant, perfume, or body spray so your baby will fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer with your smell. How about a Baby Yoda for your child or grandkids? Or even a Scooby-Doo dog for your child's forever home? And with winter on its way, Love by Stella also makes a cornucopia of blankets. And you know what? That's not all. Love by Stella also does custom designs. Take this kid's drawing, for example, that he did at school one day, for instance. Love by Stella made it into a full-sized best friend. Wreaths, coasters, beanies, dish scrubbies. Love by Stella does it all. Even custom unicorn pieces I can't show you on YouTube. 
loved by Stella, even sent me this super warm beanie from my chrome dome, as well as this awesome knight's helmet beanie, with movable face mask for super cold and windy days, or just some extra cosplay for your next D&D session. And it's all super easy to order. Just go to Facebook and search Love by Stella and scroll down to see all the different items she has to offer. You can even ask her a direct question through the messenger function or even send her an email message directly. They're quick to respond and they take pride in each and every one of their handmade products. And now, back to the episode. <laughs> 